What's up, everybody? This is NFL Network's Adam Ray. This is Owen Cruz. Kid. This is Matt Waldman. This is Chris Zorch from your Chicago Bears. I'm Dion Miller. Dan Weaver. Hey, my name's Rashad Whitfield. I'm Courtney Cronin. Hey, this is David Kaplan. Listen to me. You want to learn football? Listen to my guy, Phil and Shane. Shane and Phil. Shane and Phil. Oh, Phil. On the Tape Never Lies Network. On the Tape Never Lies Network. The Tape Never Lies Network. The Tape Never Lies Network. Tape Never Lies Network. Home of the greatest Chicago Bears fans on earth. You're on the air, baby. You're on. You did it. The following show is for mature audiences only. Watch the tape. And when you see the tape, you know, the tape doesn't lie. And there's just, the tape doesn't lie. Worried about Brisker not being signed. No, they're starting to fall off. Those second rounders that are unsigned. There's some... They get these fucking owners get crazy. I mean, there was a guy that in year three had zero guaranteed money, and another dude that had three hundred and thirty thousand guaranteed in year three. Well, I mean, let's be fucking honest. Three hundred and thirty thousand dollars to any team in the NFL is nothing and if you believed in the kid enough to fucking draft him in round three or round two are you really gonna pit i would rather be like no you know what dude here we'll get you in here let's go let's be ready to go i mean i don't think he's gonna be i don't think he's gonna hold out these they're starting to fall off fall in line i mean it's a slotted system anyway it's just it's the fucking minutia it's the wording in the contract you saw with roquan you know back in the day when he held out but it's i'm not worried i think he'll get here because these guys are starting to sign but that's that is something that you don't see too often with with bigger guys but i'm not sure what happened in new england something obviously happened for him to fall out of favor he doesn't fit their culture yeah tom brady didn't like him when he was there so there was some sort of dynamic there that's not a good sign. Yeah. But again, is he humble for a we'll seventh see. round? We talk about Madden speed rankings. Yeah. You get traded by a seventh round pick and your boys are giggling at you that you played with that maybe got drafted after. You were a first round pick. You're about to be a bump. You're about to be a bust. You're about to get out of the league. How do you, how do you handle that? Like, listen. We've all read this story or watched it. Some of these guys go out of their way and all of a sudden they don't fucking step up to the challenge. I don't know Nikhil Harry. I don't know him personally. If he's looking in the mirror saying, I'm going to show all these motherfuckers and play this great game of football and go to a a place that needs superstars. You got a great place to be if you strike lightning. Yeah. It's about moving the fucking chains. If this kid comes out there and we're running outside zone and all of a sudden you got Adrian Amos coming up here and now Nikhil Harry puts Adrian Amos on his ass and David's about is able to take it outside. That didn't show up in the fucking stats, Jordan. Lil Herbert gets outside for <laughs> Bratcher because Nikhil Harry fucking lit Adrian Amos up in the alley. Then yeah, that doesn't show up on Jonathan Wood's fucking poster boards, wallpaper, stacks. But it does for young Tate, who's watching the game with his dad, and, and Riley, watching their favorite running back get a first down move to chains against the Green Bay Packers. That... That's where this game of football is the difference. So Nikhil 
has an opportunity here. Draft Dr. Phil and the Smartest Man. Keeping it 100. Keeping it 100. Here we go. Trading up. 100. Yes! yes! What? Oh my Here it is! For just recording. Okay. The tape never lied. Keeping it 100. The people drop off, but we still keep it. You'll never know how good your football team's going to be until you play with maximum pep. <laughs> Open competition over the north and never give it back. Smartest man. My Chicago Bears select Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State. Guess who's back? The two dudes that kept it real. Dynamic duo that you love, the smartest man in Dr. Phil. Breaking down the film, never a problem, kick it straight. Most shows focus on stats, we focus on the tape. We keeping it a hundred, never running east to west. We coming with that truth, cause that's what our fans expect. Cut off the freaking anchor, forward to be free. But don't you worry, Shane's got the dumbest tweets. It ain't no secret, Phil and Shane got some haters. But now the mouth stuck like the two and now and later. Debaters, frauds get kicked like Coach Tabor. Cuts had to be made, we added the barber moderator. Up and down, boys got you double checking. Sad sacks scrolling like a full drunk texting. Flexing on the truth. Cause you know they'll never change Real, recognize real, that's what you get with Phil and Jimmy What's the name? What we do when we're breaking down the bears Fuck a play or a captain All of the objects The team never lies The truth, you see We laugh, we analyze So there's no babies like Maybelline Straight to the truth with the vacuum and facts We got a sad nerd But he's not just giving nerd stats Car crash, big impact like trick sad Every Wednesday night you got the smartest man to feel back Know you're smiling like a fat kid with fun dead. We're back better than ever and we're keeping it a hundred. Keep it up, money, baby. Keep it 100. Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man. Justin Fields gets outside the pocket. Puts that ball perfectly where only Moody can get it. One point. Keeping it 100. Two feet. Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, this is Claudio the Barber, and this is TTNL's Keeping It 100, the best bear show on the planet. Bear none. We are on day two of Keeping It 100 this week. So, of course, we got a great show. We got training camp started today. So, we got the beat writer. And the dude with a great first name, Herb Howard, coming on. He's going to talk all things Bears. So let's bring on the boy, the man, the legend, Draft. You're on the air, baby. You're on. You did it. (laughs) I did it. Yes, I did. You did it. As you always do. Late. Late, always. Yeah, you were like, I got this lag on my computer. I just, you know, you what? Were like, it's just, it is what Mariah it is. I carry with a note, but the mic wasn't on because I thought you, <laughs> I thought you were perfect. Hey, I was like, damn, my man was hitting that high note. <laughs> Listen, what's up, Claudio? What's up, Camp what's football, up? baby. That's it. Oh, it's greatest cool. game in the world. I love it. It's amazing. Chicago Bears, the charter franchise. They, I heard you go bear none. I like that, Claudio. You might have Freudian slipped that, but did I say bear? You gotta use that. Yeah, you said the best show on the planet, bear none. Bear none. Okay. Thought I said bar none, but Uh, you slipped. I slipped. Freudian slipped. Bar none is the guy we we got. Obviously, we got an elephant in the room. Somebody's missing. Yes, someone's missing. Yes, and let me just say this: Shane Marsaw came down. We thought it was COVID, but he's tested negative. But 
I put him and Cherie, Lady Bear, on the PUP. With Roquan. I talked to my assistant GM, my Ian Cunningham, Herb Howard, who will be on the show. He was like, yeah, put him on the pup list. <laughs> uh, it sucks that they're not going to be here because Shane really wanted to get down and dirty with Herb. But, yeah, say some prayer. I hope it's not COVID because let me tell you, I'm still coughing. And it's, I'm on day 15 of cold, you know, five days, and then you're good. But let me tell you, it kicked my ass. But anyway, so Shane, Cherie, love you guys. That means one of these kids will be doing the read tonight. I don't know who it's going to be, except I know it ain't Herb. <laughs> Speaking of Herb, let's get – he's hey, already here. Early. Listen, love it. Love it training camp early. starts. Herb follows the fluce timetable. I'm going to be there early. That's right. I ain't playing you're around. You're late if you're not early. No, no freaking loafing. Give him, give him the drop. Give me some fucking name. Herb Howard. That's the name. I love this dude, and I'm not just saying it because he's in the chat. You guys heard me talking about him. Let's bring him out the way we do because we got a lot to get into. Football's back. Bears football's back. Herb had eyes on camp. And when it comes to beat writers, I think Herb is in the top, I would say, three in regards to football questions. Let's bring him out. This guy is the Chicago Bears beat reporter for at It's the Bigs. He's also the co-host of the I Said What I Said podcast. On top of that, he's also a radio personality at WN iHeart Radio. Bears fans, TTNL fans, get up out your seats and give it up. For TTNL Network first timer, Herb Howard. How is he not there, Claudio? And my producers. I got producer. He should have been there. I was testing them, Herb. What's up, bro? Bill, what's going on, man? How you feeling? I think I'm upset, honestly, because I'm a perfectionist and you're not a first timer. You're been here a couple times, so this is what I hate because Shane writes the he does an amazing job, but he I forget I'll take blame then. <laughs> we forget if you start off with a first timer, you better then go back, write the script, and get the and update. That I yeah. love that man, it's so cool watching that thing. I appreciate y'all doing that, man. Let me let me say uh to Shane and Sheree, man, rest up. Hope y'all feeling better real, real soon, man. Definitely gonna miss y'all tonight but i'm very very happy to be here man keeping it honey with y'all as always i love the background you're representing the bigs uh, gotta rep for the set man i gotta yes, rep the set. shout out to the bigs yes yeah, shout out to the bigs i'm always about supporting great quality people first and yep. product first people then product that's how I, yep. I look at it because i think the two go hand in hand and you're one of those guys obviously everybody is fired up for a new era, as I call it, in Chicago Bears football. And I'm not bullshitting. I, I didn't sit down and say top three, but every time I leave a presser, I go, that was a great question by her. That was a, I can, I'm going to sit down one day and rank that. But I, I, I think you get to the root. I even loved what you asked Robert Quinn today about Travis Gibson. You know, let's start there. And I we do have some, you know, video of that, but I want to see it from your perspective. The energy as you went out onto the football field. Here's a guy that sat out, comes in as a veteran, broke Richard Dent sack record. And you right. could see in that interview, he's like, What else do I have to prove that, you know? I've given my heart and soul to this team. Of course I'm here. What was the vibe, though, for you on the field versus that interview? 
I was just interested in just, you know, watching Robert Quinn be out there doing his thing. He looked healthy. He looked rested. He looked explosive, as I expected he would. I've been telling people all spring leading to this summer that he's going to show up to camp. Like, everybody's been projecting that, you know, because he skipped mini camp, that he wouldn't show up and that he wanted to force his way out of town and get with the contender. I never believed that. That's just not who the guy is. That's not who he seems to be to me. He seems to be, you know, content. He seems to be happy where he is, and he just wants to go out and show up and play football. He's just not a guy who's going to do necessarily what you expect him to do. And so, hey, come to minicamp. Listen, I'm a veteran. I just set the single-season sack record for this franchise. <laughs> I know my body. I don't need to be there for two weeks in April. I'll show up when it's time, and I'll be ready to go. I knew he would be, and he certainly did. Um, and and at the press conference, he, just, he was himself. He, that's who he is. This is a laid-back guy. And, you know, I thought I did enough. I didn't know why they wanted to trade me. I think he doesn't really understand that part. Um, in, in, yeah, exactly. in my estimation, I think he's kind of viewing it as a slight. And I think it's I really think. quite the opposite. You're the only asset that they really have. You're the only tradable commodity that they have. And so that's why your name is coming up in trade talk. Not because you didn't do good, because you did do good. You're the only person that they could trade and get back some, you know, young talent or some future draft picks. And so that part I don't know if he quite understands why his name is coming up in trade talks, but everything else is is on par for who I've come to learn him to be. Well, stay right there because you say something so pointed and direct that I think is important. Some guys are just built loyally. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So to your point, no one's communicating with him the reality of his worth. Because his loyalty is to the game and the Bears. Yep. So you could see, I, as a coach and a former player myself, I just saw the emotion of somebody's feelings were hurt. That these questions are being asked when I've just gave everything I have. And to your point, if J.J. Watt sits out of goddamn minicamp, it's fine. it's fine. But if Robert Quinn does it, it's like, and then even my colleague, I give him shit for this too. I don't give two shits what the history. Okay, well, it's been proven Robert Quinn on one year does good, then the next year that we know there's other reasons mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. stats. So I just don't buy into any of that because the Robert Quinn that I've always seen on tape, even in his first year here playing hurt gave maximum effort and what is Eberflus and polls preaching he's the identifier of that to me yeah. and it's like i understand that he wants to build this new era that that's the way i came away from this made me so happy that robert quinn is a bear and to your point i get it the business side and he said that a bunch of time this is a business but I believe he wants to be here. And I think Bears fans that were so quick to get rid of him early when he was signed and then shut, they were shut up like little, you know what, with his sack performance and his overall right. performance. Now let's see what Robert Quinn does with a defense and a philosophy that he fits perfectly in. Perfectly. Right. Yeah, this, this is what he's made to do. He's he's an edge rusher. He's a DN. He's a four three DN. Obviously, he set the sack record as a three four outside backer. But what he's most comfortable doing is putting his hand in the dirt and bending that corner. And so you get him back where he's most comfortable. You give him give him an opportunity to rush the passer. I think he's going to have a very very productive year for you. I understand the criticism that came with the first year. He got the money. He didn't quite produce the level that everybody was expecting. He had the foot injury. But to his credit, he's just always very, very honest and been open book. He's like, listen, the foot was one thing, but I just wasn't in the right mental and emotional space to go out there and, and produce at my best level. He was honest about it. He said I, my family situation wasn't quite right. It was a new place. We were dealing with COVID, new teammates. I just wasn't quite comfortable yet. And I think that sometimes, you know, as observers, we kind of view athletes as somehow different human beings than the rest of us. It's like, if your home life is all in a state of disarray and you're dealing with things at home with the family or finances or whatever it is, you aren't going to show up to work in the best mood. You aren't going to be your most productive self. These athletes aren't any different. And so Robert Quinn is just, you know, honest enough to tell you, like, no, I just wasn't in the right space. And, you know, year two, 
I know I got my home situation more stabilized. I know my teammates. It's not COVID. I'm a little bit more healthy. I got the foot in water. And you saw what he was able to go out there and do. I think he's going to do uh, – I don't think he's going to replicate that. I don't think he's going to extend the sack record or anything like that. But I think he's certainly going to be good for another, you know, around 12 sack season or so. And I think that's exactly what the Bears need. I, I agree with you. I'm – I'm a bit today. I don't know. And I never come in with any written questions or anything. And then Shane texts me around four 30. Like I, I won't, I go just chillax, bro. Yeah. There's rest so up. much to talk about. Rest up. We got this. And I was it's just a long count, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just watching Robert Quinn and I, I had real true empathetic feelings for him as he spoke to the media and you're there front line and who better to 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 pontificate on it than you because i always feel like you get it you you get the hum, the human aspect of it sometimes they don't and i don't put you in that category i say it to anybody's face if they are like that but you are not so camp though eberflus polls day 1 they have the presser Everything's about Roquan, it seems. Is that the vibe there? Is Roquan on pup because it's a a contract thing and it's just a game now? Or is it just frustrating polls and Eberflus that this game, you know, we have to deal with this distraction in in this way? Yeah, I think it's highly unlikely that Roquan actually has an injury. I think he's, <laughs> I, I think it's highly unlikely that he's truly physically unable to perform, right? Um, but I will give the Bears credit for going ahead and putting him on the pup list, right? I think it's it's kind of a a good faith gesture for them from them to him to say, hey, we'll put him on the pup because they could start finding him just for not practicing, right? They they could start doing that, and um, you know, not doing that. I think that that's a cool thing. But I, I, I'll tell you what, though, Phil, I think this thing has the potential of dragging out a lot longer than the Bears really? have wanted to and Bears fans wanted to. Roquan Smith is not a guy who seems to be quick to kind of fold on, on his principles. And I think once he's decided that he's going to stand on something, he's going to stand on it. You remember, this is the guy, number eight overall pick in 2018. He was the very last player in his draft class to sign his rookie deal because of the language in it. He missed 29 days then. This is not a guy who's going to fold easily. Now you flip it to the other side. Ryan Poles is a first-year GM. Yes. He doesn't want to fold easily either. He doesn't want to set a precedent that I'm going to cave in to the demands of players doing contract negotiations. And so this is gonna this this could turn into a long game of who's going to blink first. And that could get very, very scary and dangerous for a team who really needs their all-pro linebacker out on the field. Here's where I want to ask you, you know, you bring up the first year GM and I'm just sitting here thinking about it. You have a job to do. A priority mm -hmm. is to protect the franchise. Here's a guy tech. He's under contract on a fifth year. Yeah. So strategy for me, football wise, I would be like, sit out. You already have your deal. And We'll talk about how you perform, and then that will be paid. Performance is going to equate to pay. I don't know if, if Roquan's playing this the right way. I think, and the thing, I want your opinion on this, because there's a two part of this. Because what I'm saying football-wise, polls is going to, you don't overpay in my opinion, and we talked about this last night, and a lot of people were getting it confused, but an off-the-ball linebacker, where he's going to be is, to me, not something I'm paying $20, 22000000 million for. I just I don't believe it, and he has not made impactful, game-changing play. There's no doubt the talent's there, and I said this is twofold, and I want your opinion on it. Matt Nagy was a terrible coach. I've said it since the day he was here, and he won coach of the year. The defensive philosophy did not use him in a manner I felt that perfectly fit him and allowed him to blitz and use that. But he was put in situations 
to make plays and be that dynamic leader. He was hurt, but he's been a consistent tackler. As far as game-changing plays, I haven't seen them. So, Herb, are you willing – are you betting on polls playing this this game of tug-of-war? And are you with me? Like, we – we got to see what this guy is because I'm excited about Nick Morrow, the Mike linebacker, the guy with the blue, the green dot as well. So what are your thoughts here on Roquan, this whole mess? I think that I don't know polls well enough to say exactly what he'll do. But again, mm-hmm. I just think as a first year GM, I think that he probably does not want to set a precedent of caving in like that. And so I think that he'll try to play this thing out as long as he possibly can. I also think that Roquan Roquan Smith is willing to do that as well. I think he's willing to take this thing as far as he needs to take it. Now, your other question. Yeah. Pay the guy. Like, he's a top five linebacker in this league. He's not Nick Morrow. Like, he's he's better than that. Like, pay this dude. This is a guy who over the last two years is one of only two players to have 300 tackles and 30 TFLs in a two-year span. The other dude's name is Ray Lewis. Like, pay this guy. He is making an impact play. We saw him get the pick, the pick six against the AFC champs last year. Like, he, he's making plays all over the field. He's sideline to sideline. If you put him in that weak side backer spot in this yeah, tackle two, cover two go. defense, he's going to have 150 tackles this year. Like, and so then what are you going to do? Like, what's, what's the number going to be after he leaves the league in tackles after he's a first team all pro, pay that dude. Just go ahead and pay him or say, hey, we don't really value that that much. And then do whatever you want to do. But you can't base it on talent or even production. The dude is uber talented and he's been ultra productive. Pay the guy and move on. What, where is your value in his pay then? Are we looking at Eberflus's old boy over there, Shaquille now? I right. guess he changed his name. <laughs> Are we looking at that contract to come into it? Because I want to know, I agree with you 100% for truth here, guys. Uh, I've said it many times. I believe he's going to be the, the will linebacker. Now he's covered, and his skill set is run, chase, protect, and destroy. He's got great closing speed. That's his skill set. So I understand where Herb's coming from. Where is that money, Herb? What is the deal? Like, what do you what do you look at? Like, is it twenty million? Is it fourteen million? Do we look at the contracts of linebackers now? Darius Leonard got twenty million, right? So I, I imagine that is the number that Roquan is eyeing somewhere yeah. in that range. If you're talking about losing out on perhaps your very best player or having this kind of, I don't know, this tension with your very best player because you say, we want to give you 18. And he's like, no, 21. Come on. (laughs) Like, what are we talking about? We're talking about billion dollar front. Like, stop playing games, right? Don't make it an ego thing. And I think right now we're going to get into an ego thing and then we're going to start trying to nitpick this guy when he's clearly, clearly one of the very best linebackers in the league and probably your best player. Let's not do this. Let's not do this at all. Now, if this was some other guy, then we can have a conversation. But This is a guy who's been everything you've asked him to be. He's been really, really good on the field. He's been a leader on and off the field. He's been a model citizen since he's been here in Chicago. He's always a guy who's willing to come out and face the media and answer tough questions. He does it every single time. Pay this dude. This is this this isn't this isn't the guy to kind of do that with. Go ahead and pay him, and it also just sets a it sets a bad precedent for the rest of the guys on the team. They know that. Roquan is the best amongst them, not only on the field, but character and leadership and everything else. A couple of years ago, when, when all the defensive players kind of wanted to stage this kind of holdout or this protest and they didn't come, Roquan was like, hey, 
I love y'all. I feel y'all. I'm coming to mini camp. I'm coming to voluntary mini camp, mandatory mini camp. He's always there. He does what he's supposed to do all the time. It's time for the Bears to do what they're supposed to do. I love it. I love what you're saying. And it, it makes me think because what, as a coach, you know, for me, the I'm going to be honest with you. I watch a lot of tape of this, obviously, you know, the network, and I see a good linebacker. I have not seen the dominant linebacker. But again, I've always put it under the, the umbrella of injury oh. mm -hmm. and coaching. Then there was this quirky, he left scenario. You remember that? He, yeah. he had personal reasons. Remember, mm -hmm. they kept saying personal reasons. Mm -hmm. So there is some quirkiness when I see Roquan, and I hate the fact that the Bears – do this freaking Vogue model shoot with him wearing, and now the, the contract and the pup, again, it just creates this. It's because if they you, know he's their best player. You know, they know that. <laughs> but if you know this contract thing is, put Justin Fields in the orange jersey and do the model shoot. It, become, it just... They should have been Justin Fields anyway. Justin Fields exactly. is the face of the franchise. Exactly. Roquan is the best player right now, but Justin's the face. So just let Justin do all of the photos. I, I agree. I, I just, I'm telling you, every time I, I think the Bears take steps forward, these are the little things that they take steps back with. And that's why mm -hmm. you're on the front line. Like Justin Fields should be in the orange jersey taking pictures as the face of your franchise. That should be that should be it. But I hear you. it is an interesting thing. And let me say this. I always say it and I believe it. And my producer has evidence later in the show. My whole fuck a cap philosophy <laughs> has been proven right. And again, uh, I owe credit. We'll owe credit to Pat McAfee for you know fighting this fight. I don't know who had it first, me or him, but I've always said the cap does not matter at all. We can manipulate it any way we want. We can get players. It's just the owners deciding, do we want this and do we want to pay it? Because to your point, when Jimmy and Hen Henry and Joe and Michael say, 20 million is too much, Herb, for Roquan, at the end of the day, the cap never goes down unless they COVID hit. <laughs> and we're not, we're about to see NFL Sunday ticket on guess where Apple Apple's right. going to win this right about 4 billion dollars just right. to broadcast <laughs> it's just it, it's, it's monopoly market. money they're playing yes, with it's just exactly. it's ridiculous and i know exactly. to you know average people like us it's like hey it's 15 million dollars take it but yeah. it's not about the number it's about market value and my market value says this is the number. And so you take whatever profession you're in and whatever you make right now and then let your bosses come to you and say, actually, you're worth 15% less than that. We're going to take it out your next check. No, the fuck you not. Like, yes. no, you're not. And Roquan's like, no, I've shown up every day. I'm done what I'm supposed to do. I've proven that I'm one of the best. I'm a two-time second-team all-pro linebacker. Pay me or don't. He has but been fucked over. Yeah. From being an all pro, Let's no, he, he he has been an all pro. He hasn't been a pro bowler, which That's is a what different I mean, thing. Pro bowler, I mean, yeah, whatever. Bowler. That's a different thing. You go to Hawaii or Vegas and play if you want to. But the players and the coaches are like, this dude is an all pro. He's been twice, but he should be a first team all pro. Uh, yeah, probably playing on a shitty team does that to you a lot of time. But the Pro Bowl snubs, I just wanted to say that because it becomes you know Don Burr. And all of these Lions and Packers and fucking whatever, oh my, well, how many Pro Bowls does he have? And yeah. they go there, you know what I'm saying? So legit, for the legit. record, he's deserved that kind of recognition. We can say whatever it is we want, Pro Bowl don't matter, but just like a Madden ranking, as I, you know, uh, Caden Whitlow, the producer of The Open, great job. When I was talking about Nikhil Harry, 
being traded for a seventh rounder giggles around from his boys mm-hmm. affect mm-hmm. affect you that perspective yeah. same with your speed on madden yeah. these things matter to players like herb is saying and and i'm telling you so roquan has some pride in what he's been able to do so to your point i think you've converted me he's in that 19 million 20 if you pay this guy get him in there and let him lead the culture of what it is damn nobody really changes my perspective that quickly herb so <laughs> this is a record because i was there everything the they're asking for 15 I, I mean, 16 listen, million that's just what? you i mean that, that's just you keeping it a buck right that's you keeping yeah. it a hundred like that is this guy the is this guy these things well, yes. yeah he is these things all right, then cool. Then go ahead and give him his money. He's everything they've been asking for. We want try hard guys that are going to hustle the ball in place of the echo of the whistle. And they're going to show up. They're going to do the right things. Sounds like you're talking about this dude. But then you're going to be like, mm, we two million dollars off. Stop playing. Yeah, Stop just, playing. Just get I, mean, I, I was getting ready to rip the Bears if they were a hundred thousand dollars off with Jaquan Brisker. I was getting ready to like. Just give this kid the fucking money and start this cultural movement. So to that point, when you when you break it down, this is where you turned me. And I'm sure Cars and Shane are going to stay on the other side. But I will always, you know, Herb Howard changed my mind here. I'm always going to use your name because that's what I do. I always give credit where credit is due. And I think you're right. My stance was $16 million. Give this dude $16 million and then push it out over the years, make the contract 64 million. I don't give a fuck, but he's getting 16 million. I, why not 20? For that kind of leader, you got me, bro. You you got me. And, and again, we're here with Herb Howard from It's the Bigs. The dude is one of the best beat writers out there giving you fans. We always talk about holding – uh, especially on this network, the beat writers and the media accountable because we want all the nuggets. And we talked a, a lot about Roquan, but let's talk about this offensive line. Obviously, first day, Riley Reef is out there. They just signed him. They signed the kid Schofield uh, from the Chargers. Um, and you're watching this offensive line. What are your thoughts? Obviously, first day. We're not. I don't even think there was any, you know, physical contact. But they did do some one-on-ones. Coach Eberflu said. So, yeah, what are your thoughts on these moves, first of all? And then let's. Then we'll talk about Justin and Larry. Well, I would say I mean, first Tevin and Larry. Tevin and Larry. That that's that's my first thing about those moves, though. It's an indictment on those young kids, right? Yes. That's that's what it is. It is Eberflu and Poles have not seen enough from those young kids to feel comfortable with them going forward. Now, Larry Borm got all of the first team reps at right tackle today. Riley Reef was on the left side, and he was actually splitting first team reps with Braxton Jones, the fifth round pick from Southern Utah. If those are the three tackles right now, you're talking about having two starting in one swing, who's the odd guy out? Tevin Jenkins, the second round pick from last year, is the odd guy out. He's not in that rotation at all right now. And you go back to minicamp, they have him playing behind Braxton Jones. Then they bring in Riley Reef. Now he's even further on the depth chart. I think that last year's second round pick is starting to become in danger of not making this team. And wow. he was asked, Iberfuls was asked today, does he think that Tevin Jenkins has some p- positional flexibility? Could he kick inside the guard? And Flus was like, who said that? Like, no, like, no, no. Who said nobody said that? He's like, well, we asked you about it early. He's like, well, yeah, whatever. No, that's not a, that's not a real thing. And so um, I like the signings. I think it brings in some insurance, some security. I still think that best case scenario for the Bears long term would be if the young kids were able to earn those spots coming out of camp. That would be the best way for them to solve those to, to, to get the solutions long term. But short term, they've at least got two guys who can be placeholders until they're able to figure it out if these guys are not the answers. And so right now, if I had to bet on it, I would say they're going to start the season week one when San Francisco gets here. You're going to go Riley Reef, Whitehair, uh, Patrick, 
Schofield, Borum. I think that's how that's going to go week wow. one if I had to bet on it right now. Now, could that change over the next 30, 35, 40 days? Sure, it could. But right now, I think that's probably how it's going to end up. Now, if, right now, it looks like Braxton Jones is going to be your swing tackle. And I'm serious, Tevin Jenkins might not make this team. I would be shocked if the but I, I just pause there because that's going to be a sound bite right there. Um, Tevin Jenkins, though, has been hurt. And all offseason, someone in the know has told me they, they being the Chicago Bears, Ryan Poles, and the coaching staff have kept him easy. Easy, slow down, easy. So I've been around coaching a lot. And when you're wanting a player to slow down, don't hustle, they want to get you healthy, they want to get you to pads to -hmm. make these defining moments. So Mm -hmm. to your point, today you're saying that, but how much of it do you believe when the pads come on? Because I look at talent-wise, Tevin is the most talented of all of them, like Mm -hmm. gifted. How his mental state, how he is injured or not, we have to figure that out. And and it's, I believe this is a way you motivate Tevin to Mm -hmm. to rise to the occasion. If he doesn't, then you've you found out you found out that mentally he's not up for the challenge. He is not up for the challenge. I certainly hope he is. Like, I had high Mm -hmm. hopes for him when they took him. I thought he could be a bookend tackle for a decade for the Bears. And maybe Mm -hmm. he still can. Again, to your point, pads come on. That's when you really can – That's only then can you truly begin to evaluate what's happening in the trenches. Exactly. I'm just reading the, the tea leaves since this new regime has been here. And for whatever reason, they don't love the kid. Right, they didn't draft him. Number you feel one, it. you know what I mean. Number one, they didn't draft him. Number two, yep. post came first day introductory press conference. I want small, lean linemen that move. That <laughs> ain't do. He's a big mauler. You look at the tackles that Ryan Pose drafted or brought in. They've got long arms. That's not him either, right? And so I don't know that he fits the mold for what they want. Now, is that to say that the kid can't ball? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just looking at what they've done since they've been here. And to me, it says if the season starts today, he's the odd man out. And if he's not the swing tackle and he doesn't have positional flexibility to kick inside and play guard, then he's not going to be on your 46 on game day. He he can't be, right? He can't be on your – like you're going to take seven guys on the offensive line. You might take eight into the game one's going to be the swing tackle that other guy is has to be able to play all three interior positions or at least shuffle another guy down if he can only play guard then somebody one of the starters kicks in and plays center if he can't play if he can't play guard and he's not one of the top three tackles yeah what's he doing right you're not going to give him to the practice squad so if he's not not, so so you might have you would have to trade him at that point you would have you to trade. trade nobody's gonna, look, nobody's gonna make that trade. I guess if somebody, somebody if somebody, somebody loves them, if somebody t- like one and they're like, "Hey, you'll you take a seven, and you can get your seven back for Enkil yeah. Harry, maybe." You maybe get, I, I could see that. If somebody doesn't some. want to get into a bid and work for him, I could see that. Yeah, you would get. I would say a fifth round pick, no, way. at least for no for way. Tevin. I'm telling you, no way, and especially the evaluation. But again, first day, I want to see this dude in pads. Uh, again, the glimpse of Tevin is walking, riding a bicycle, walking up a hill, holding a weight. Then all of a sudden, Jason Peters gets hurt, and he's starting at left tackle against Green Bay, and he gets embarrassed, right? Then he comes back the next week, and he plays his ass off against the Vikings and is the only guy on the entire roster to show pride. Now – a culture change talking about pride talking about pricks talking about toughness i don't know the tevin is he meshing you know and polls knows offensive linemen better than ryan pace does so but i saw one of the the statements in the chat i think it was will mookie hill i agree 
we don't, me and Herb don't have the opportunity, A, to sit down with these guys. Right. Because if I sit down with a player, I'll find out we got to take a chance on this guy. But the injury aspect, I mean, you go back to Chris Williams, you go back to Gabe Karimi, the injury, you can't take injured offensive linemen. So if there was a concern or a red flag, and Greg Gabriel has said that they're around the league there was, which pushed Tevin into the second round, then that's a mistake. And if that's held him back, I especially to to pro- probably your point, when a culture comes in and says, let's start anew, this kid isn't meshing, he could be gone. He could be gone. But yeah, that's, all, hopefully- that's all I'm saying. It's not, it's not necessarily – a direct indictment of Tevin. That's not what I'm trying to do, right? Last right, year, right. I see people saying he's he's absolutely worth the fifth round pick. Twelve months ago, he was worth the second round pick. So right. it's not it's not him per se. This regime doesn't seem to value him in that way. And the deeper it goes in the camp, the other 31 teams are going to realize, hey, that dude probably is not going to make the team. And it's like, hell no, I'm not giving you a fifth. I'll give you a seven so I can avoid, you know, having to bid on him in the free agency. But I I don't see if the Bears to the point where, like, he's not one of their top three. I don't see somebody saying we'll give you a fifth for him. It's not like he's I proven. Would, Nobody I'm even with, knows for sure that he's good. I'm with Adeptus, though. Mm-hmm. If, if Mustafa makes the team and Jenkins gets I, <laughs> I don't get it. I'm sorry. I, I'm with – but again, and I – I see. I want to say I'm going to call him out, Jay Sanders. You have to look at what Herb is saying from the perspective of what he's seeing, vibing. He's. He, I think you're being very clear. You're not questioning the player or the talent. They haven't had got pads on. Tevin might get punched in the fucking cojones tomorrow, right? And all of a sudden, you know what? Fuck this. And just start and, and then just yeah. start. I've seen it. I, as a coach, could say truthfully, I've been wrong about some players. I sure. no fucking way is this kid gonna make play running out, whatever it was. For and sure. All of a sudden, this kid builds himself, understands what you're asking, and goes a hundred miles an hour. The game of football. As complex as it is, at the end of the day, it's simply about determination. Do, mm-hmm. do you have it? Mm-hmm. Does Tevin have it? Mm-hmm. His story, I mean, Nikhil Harry, you got this guy out here. His story is up to Nikhil. There's no question, like you said, his talent. He gets traded for a seventh-round pick. Yeah. Yeah. So before you blast uh, Herb, Hey, I'm cool with it. We'll wait and see. Holler at me yeah. in 40 days, right? Just, ho- just holler at me in 40 days. All I know is in the spring, they took a fi- they got a- they put a fifth round pick from Southern Utah in front of the guy. And at that point, I was like, well, maybe they're just trying to get in his head motivated. Yeah. Yep. But then you bring in a 10 year vet, and that yep. pushes him even further down. I'm just again, I'm just kind of reading the the the, the writing on the wall here, and it's it's telling me a story that this dude is in trouble, and we'll see. I am with uh, Vito here. I have no, I don't have my reading glasses, but I, when I scouted Tevin Jenkins, I'm like, this kid is a left tackle, a dancing bear, an angry, athletic fucking football player that's going to be in this league. It's up to Tevin though now. If Te- Tevin, I hope you're, you're watching. You can there are guys with extreme talent that have gone out of the league because they're soft up here. Not here. They can lift everything in the weight room, but right here. Mm-hmm. They start feeling sorry for themselves, and they cave in. I'm just saying, I don't want it to be Tevin. If I, I don't who's want the it to biggest be Tevin I fan want, there is? I, I still want him to be the next the Bear Tiger for 10 years. Right, Riley Reef may be the Bears tackle for ten months. They would be better <laughs> off having Tevin Jenkins for ten years. I'm I, that's what I, I want. want, but it's not. It's, again, the signs aren't pointing that way, and I'm not saying he's going to get cut. 
I'm saying it's starting to get in the direction of, of it being dangerous. We'll see. We'll if, see. If, <laughs> Jay Sanders, you can holler at me in, 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 in 40 days. Come holler at me. You can, you can yes. scream as much as you want. <laughs> we will bring uh, her back on final cuts. We'll see. And we'll talk about the final roster. Listen to me here, Herb, before we turn the page on Tevin. This is me, draft day. Yes. Let's go, Jenkins. That's confirmed from Adam Schefter also. Give Next. me a tackle yep. or give me death. That's it. I wanted Tevin that badly. I'm chanting, Tevin, give me a tackle. So, listen, we have these conversations because we want the Bears to be better. We want, we want Tevin to be better. You pick a side. Right now it's a roll of the dice. I say pads come on. Tevin hopefully wakes up and and they move forward. And Tevin, listen, is there anything better for a football team than competition? No. No, there's not. You're right. And the last coach couldn't figure that out. He couldn't understand this guy right here. David Montgomery is your identity that's going to help your football team. All the curls you want to run, well, Devin can help you. I mean – David can help you David. out with this, right? Anyway, Justin Fields, he's out there. How's his vibe been? Because to me, and you tell me if I'm right, it felt like Justin felt hindered by Matt Nagy's presence. It was like dealing with a stepdad who just doesn't understand you. Mm. How is he feeling now in your understand of what you're watching because i know you're a fan of his as well yeah I, I i am definitely a fan of justin fields i think he has all the tools to to reach his full potential um yesterday at his press conference he was asked if he was put in a tough position uh, in a bad in a bad position last year and true to form he's never going to throw anybody under the bus he didn't throw the previous regime under the bus i wasn't surprised by his answer when he didn't throw the old coaches under the bus. But what he did say was, listen, <laughs> sometimes you're gonna get put in a bad position and you still just gotta find a way. It's like, okay, so yeah, you were put in a bad position. You know what I mean? So I think that <laughs> he understands that it wasn't ideal for him. I think that anybody who's given the kid a fair shake should understand that that's not ideal for him. All we heard from Matt Nagy all last spring was, it's gonna be Andy Dalton. Justin's going to be the number two. That's what it's going to be. We watched him go all the way through training camp with Justin Fields getting minimal reps with the number ones. Then all of a sudden, there's an injury. Then you catch the pressure. Now this kid's thrown out there, and it's 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 a miracle he didn't die in Cleveland, right? That was like you should have charged Matt Nagy with, with premeditated murder for what happened to that kid in Cleveland. You put him out there in a terrible, terrible spot. There was no way wow. he was going to succeed. And then just kept snowballing on him. And so he wasn't put in the best position. I'm not letting let him off the hook. He did have some poor mechanics. He did make some bad decisions. But you also saw the natural ability. You saw his arm talent. You saw his ability to make every throw on the field. His athleticism is undeniable. We know what he can do with his legs when the play breaks down. And so it just becomes a question of how quickly he can pick up Luke Getze's offense and how much he continues to develop as a second year quarterback. If he does that thing, those things, I think he'll continue to ascend. And I think ultimately he will reach uh, his full potential. I, I really, really like the kid. I think he was put in a tough spot last year. No doubt about it. And I think people, you know, are so quick to judge Justin, but I think offensively there was moments in this guy's offense that, Justin isn't the lead character. It was never mm – -hmm. I felt like Matt Nagy didn't want Justin Fields. And everything offensively that I have ever learned, Matt Nagy did the opposite of how to make Justin be successful. It would, it would baffle me. It would infuriate me. It would get me to levels of frustration that I couldn't believe because – it wasn't as hard, but it, it, I don't think it was a personal thing to Justin. I just think yeah. Matt Nagy was that lost 
And if you look back, even in the commentary about the I formation and things that were working and how you fought against that, it's like you're losing your career. And all of us, all I see now from me, and you tell me if I'm right, is Justin Fields taking off this jacket. It's like that moment in Rocky where, you know, Apollo gives – Rocky, those uh, American flag, these are my former shore. You wear these and go Mm -hmm. out there. And Mm -hmm. it just is that, like, all of a sudden, I feel like this kid is about to blow up. A lot of people are doubting this kid, and I just just feel like Getsy gets it. No pun intended there, but he gets what Justin's athleticism means to the run game. Because think about it, if you're running outside zone and you have that threat, you pull that maybe, thing and boot it back. Exactly. <laughs> if you, this isn't fucking uh, Giovanni Carmazzi at Hofstra at, at San Francisco right. Or, right. or what's his name, Jimmy Garoppolo. Now this right. is an, a freaking athlete with blazing world class speed going around the edge. Now you have waggle options and deep options with a guy who has a strong arm it would just baffle me that you wouldn't do this but he matt Nagy wouldn't now you got it built in so me and herb already taught i mean this is gary you heard gary kubiak's name brought up mm-hmm. by schofield today mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so if you know what that is then you know it's going to be a lot of outside zone Boo. Full back, a full back tight end in the flat. In the flat, yep. Tight end, a backside tight end drag, backside post, deep comeback. Now Justin's on the corner. Oh, I'm threatening to throw. They back up. He takes off their 16. Yeah. It's, it's, it Football might be is, it's, it's a simple game at its core. Exactly. At its, it's core, neat. it's a very, very simple game. And I think that players just need direction and yesterday Jalen Johnson was the third Bears player the third key critical Bears player to say this year we have a sense of direction a sense of structure we know what the expectation is David Montgomery said it Darnell Mooney said it and yesterday Jalen Johnson said it right and so (laughs) never mind Matt Nagy move on from Matt Nagy I like him as a person didn't work as a coach move on from that but you're talking about this new coach who's come in who set the expectation, he's made it clear, and he's consistently um, re-emphasizing exactly what it is that they want to do, and the players understand it. I don't think that at any point in any game last year, anybody, the players, fans, anybody, walked into that game and said, I know what the Bears want to do, right? Like, whether or not you're able to do it, what what is that you even want to do? And if the players don't even know what we want to do, how we're going to do it. You know what I mean? And so at the very least, this Bears team is going to know what it is that Eberflus, that Getsy, that Williams wants to do. And that that gives them off to a good start at the very, very least. Now you just let their athletic ability kind of take over, and we'll see. We know they're deficient in talent in some areas, but they've also got some guys that could be ready to ascend, and you got to give them the best opportunity to do so. Nerd, Nerd alert. There he is. Good no evening. One, no one told me you were there. How long were you there? I, 47 I, minutes. No, I was just there for about two minutes. I okay. finally, finally, got, finally got my youngest to bed, so sorry. My guy, that. Cars, is in the house. Uh, Herb, have you ever met Cars? I don't remember. Indeed, indeed. Yes. I have. Okay. I have. okay. Everything's good then. We're, yeah. we're back. Cars, obviously, first day of camp, Herb talking we we've talked about robert quinn roquan justin fields and we've talked now about our guy um the offensive line tevin jenkins and borum riley reef <laughs> so i don't know what that leaves you because <laughs> jazz hands i think that's all i got at this point right we'll just do a little little of that what 
I, I no, I think you know. I think though the thing that you kind of hit on her, which I, I found interesting, is listening to every guy in there. Justin Jones, all about accountability. Like the thing that you continually hear preached across everybody is accountability. Whereas like last year, everybody had their own agenda and things that they wanted to do and talk about. Like mm -hmm. it, everybody feels like they're drinking from the same fire hose. They're all doing the same things together. It's really, I didn't expect so much of a d direct 180 from previous, but like you could tell the folks are really bought in. There's a lot of people wanting to do this the right way. It's really encouraging so far. That's that's all I've got. I I, I was that's, good to see you. I'm gonna head out for the night. Uh, but. <laughs> no, I agree. We heard Jalen Johnson say that yesterday um, in terms of that accountability piece, and uh, it was asked had he been held accountable, had he been called out in the film session, said we all have. He's like you talk to any one of these players and say they haven't. They're lying. Because every single thing is being scrutinized. Everything, every single thing is being reinforced. Every belief, every discipline. Hey, you didn't finish that play. And I don't care if you were way backside 30 yards away. You should have been on your way to the ball. Exactly. And I think those are the types of things that are going to become contagious. They're going to become infectious. They're going to become second nature. And that's when now that ball pops out. Now you've got four or five guys right there and like, how do they get so many turnovers? Because they've got so many people over there. That's how they get so many turnovers. You just got to be there when those things happen. And you never know what's going to happen. It could be first play, last play. Get your butt to the ball, and you just might come up with it. I've said this for the last I don't know how many years about Chicago Bears football. It's okay. Lovey, you had a glimpse, but it was one-sided. It was held accountable on one side. You hustle every fucking play. You play to the whistle. What Herb is talking about, backside. Justin Fields might cut back and need somebody throwing deep down the field. If you're loafing like Allen Robinson was, then what's going to happen? He ain't going to make the play. He might get three yards. But that's where, Herb, what you said, and I wanted to highlight it, but I can't quote you perfectly, so I'm going to paraphrase. You don't <laughs> know what this team can do. None of these guys know what this team can do because maximum effort, and it's what they're preaching, it's what I've said. We had Ryan Nall and David Montgomery on our show together. To a man, they said, we had never... <laughs> in front of the entire team, watched the tape and been held accountable. Yeah. Mm. In fact, it wasn't mm. till week 12 that we did it and players, and he didn't tell us who, went up to coach and said, we like this. We want more of mm. this. Mm. This is players teaching a coach to coach. That's how bad this was. So when I heard that, I mean, Shane, I remember him texting me, you got – are you hearing this? And I was like, oh, my God, I'm like dumbfounded. But the reality is anything can happen in football when maximum effort is given. And if you're – my last point here on that was I asked Borum, I asked David, I asked Dieter Eislin, I asked – um Ryan Nall and every player that came on. Was there ever a time that you guys did something wrong and practice with a play and Coach Nagy stopped and said, let's run it again? Right. To a man, every one of them said no. It went on to the next thing. So what Herb is saying now, and when you go out to camp, people, I want you to watch that. I want you to see the details be important, even if it's one play. Do it again, and then we'll fucking get some water. Then we'll stop practicing. Do it again. Do it right. Then we'll. That's the only way we learn by mistakes and by accountability. I'm excited for this football team because if you have young guys buying into this stuff, and so far you're out there. The one guy I was worried about, let me ask you about, is Eddie Jackson. I didn't know if he and his ego and the salary he got. 
and the effort and tackling that he put on tape that he was going to buy into this. What are your thoughts on him so far? Those are all fair questions and, 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 and criticisms of him to one of those things, right? His, his decline in production paralleled with his pay. And so, you know, that's fair. But to his credit, he's come out and said, listen, they are coaching me hard. They're focusing on the details. They're coaching me on everything from the angles I take in my drops to how I show up to the football. He says, and I love it. I want that. They're making me better. People forget this is a kid that came out of Alabama, right? He yes. can take tough coaching. Yeah. He, Nick Saban he coached this to. kid, right? He benched he him. Nick benched him. Coach. Yeah, he, this, this dude, it's not like he's a fragile guy who can't take tough coaching. He's used to it, right? Now, he didn't necessarily experience it with Matt Nagy and maybe got a little comfortable. And then he had all that early success, and he's like, oh, I know better than you guys know, right? I was good before y'all got here. And, yes. you know, maybe he started to feel himself a little bit, but then he recognized the decline in his production. He started to hear everybody talking about him. He's not that good, this, that, and the third. And now you get another coaching staff that comes in and say, hey, we don't give a fuck what you did before, okay? Either do things our way or you can get your ass out too. And I think he understands that. And I think to his credit, he seems to appreciate it. Um, and I think that pairing him with Jaquan Brisker is going to be really, really good for him. Like you get a kid who wants to oh play down God. the box. He wants to deal with those tight ends and running backs. And now you get Eddie Jackson back where he's comfortable in center field ball. Hall. <laughs> I think I expect a big season from him. The Bears are certainly going to need it. But that's one of the more dynamic pairings. If Eddie lives up to his old bill, you know, his old billing as a yeah. safety, like that's that. That part is super exciting because if Eddie gets on and, and Brisker is who we think he is, all of oh a sudden, God. you know, it's... you've got between like Morrow and and Roquan laying the hammer and the way that Brisker likes it. Like you're gonna you're gonna have guys here in footsteps. And you've got Robert Quinn coming off the edge, allowing you to play center field on third and thirteen. I don't yeah. know how many times we got to see the deep in. No one there. It's wide open. I believe that that shit's going to get shut down. Now, all of a sudden, to your guy's point here, I mean, Brisker, to me, oh. is going to be a star. I think so, too. I think so, too. <laughs> I think he's legit, legit. Like, legit, oh, yeah. legit. Dude, like, it's going to take that first preseason game, and he's going to do something, and you're going to be like – Like, decapitate somebody. Yeah. You could sit down. We get it. You, you're you in. You're starting. We're good. We'll find right. out. We're going to find out right. who your depth piece is. <laughs> <laughs> when Brisker came into Penn State, I still remember it. I'm like, this linebacker here, he, <laughs> he is so – I don't know. He's so lengthy and big, but he's, he's not like fat or anything like that. He's just oh. – he is like chiseled. And he just puts himself I, – I say Erlacher and Mike Brown had a child. That's who Brisker is. That's what you're getting because he has the intangible instincts. He's got that range. And he's also got what you're going to let Eddie Jackson not have to worry about. He's got pride in the alley. And when I find a player that has pride in the alley, Love that. Adrian, Adrian Amos had it. That's why yeah. I love the dude. And he's haunted us since he went over to that other place. But the reality he's is. He's going to run this... that alley full speed and run <laughs> oh, straight yeah. through the ball oh, here. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. He's got Three like that Bob Sanders whistle. type thing, except yes. he's big, right? Bob Sanders it's... played like that, but he wasn't big enough to sustain Perfect. it. Jaquan can Perfect. play like that and continue to play like that. I, had, I just have this feeling you're going to hear a train whistle when he's running because that's just the way it's going to be. Like, that's all you're going to hear the through, uh, through any of those lights. I yeah. love it, Cars. I love it. I like that. I, I like was going to ask you on top of this, now since we've sprayed our love of Brisker all over the wall of – Fame please, here. please don't say that again. Yeah, okay. that's un that's, uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> that's very uncomfortable right now. Don't yeah. make that a drop. <laughs> too late. Bratcher. It's too late. Anyway, is there one guy that you're like, bro, 
this dude you got to watch out for that nobody's really talking about? Is there somebody, uh, Herb, that you personally, I trust your eyes. So is there somebody that you see out there? He doesn't even have no, to be starting right now. I, I don't I don't know if they have like a sleeper like that, to be honest with you. Okay. I think the, the guy I would have said was the guy we just yeah praised. Like he yeah. I, I think he's going to be that guy. I will say Valis Jones. Okay. If he's used properly, right? Mm-hmm. And you can do that in a lot of ways. You can put him back there on kick return. I hope he wins the kick return job. But yes. you put him out there in the slot. And you just have an automatic snap throw. If they're five or six yards off of him, snap it, throw it to him. <laughs> Let him take those five yards, right? And he has the potential to break that first tackle and take it 80 and hit his head on the goalpost. Like, he's got that kind of speed. But he's not He's not like turbo. He's not like one of these small speed guys. This dude yeah. is thick. You know what I mean? He, this, yeah. dude, this dude is thick. And so he can break that tackle and take it the distance. And so if they're going to put him in the slot and, and for whatever reason, you've got a guy six, seven yards off, that should be automatic. Don't even think about it. Snap it, sling it out there to him. Let him get the five and six if it's there and see if he can break one. Um, other than that, I, I don't know that they have anybody that I'm kind of just eyeing to say, hey, this guy could be a breakout or this is a person that people aren't really thinking about. But those those two uh Jaquan and, and Velas, I, I think have Jaquan has I think he's gonna be a star, like a star star. Um if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I think he's gonna be a star. And Velas just I'm, has that big play potential it. to here and there. I'm not saying he's gonna be number one wide out, nothing like that. But you pick his spots and he's gonna be a difference maker for you. Who's the uh Alex H, one of our patrons, has a question. Mm-hmm. Who is the player? you most want to ask a question to, and what would that question be? It's a good question. They don't give um, you that. They don't, they don't give you that, that and, old school, like, hey, I'd like to speak to Dominique Robinson out of Miami, Ohio. Right. I want to sp- – they don't hey, do that, right? He could be a special teams ace. Really? Right. right. To just go back to that last question. He could be yes. a special teams ace. Like day one, just looking at the kid, he is built yeah, yeah. like a house, and he yes. can run. And so when I see a guy like that, I think special teams. I think like uh, what was the kid from New England, Jamie? Uh, oh, Jamie Collins. Name. Yeah, Jamie yeah. Collins. I, I think that kind of athlete. When I see him, wow. Right? Um, I think he can be that kind of a special teams player, a four phase special teams kind of guy for you. Just that you mentioned him, but um, ask There's one guy a question. Yes, who would and it, it be? can't be Robert Quinn? And did he ask to be traded in the offseason? I think that one got beat in, into a dead <laughs> oh horse my God. today. So, oh my God, thank answer, God, Herb can answer like over and over and over. <laughs> asked, I was like, my goodness, the man asked it, I'll answer it a hundred times. Um, I would, I would like to sit down with Jalen Johnson, right? And, I, and we get to talk okay. to Jalen Johnson quite a bit, and I've really asked him a lot of questions because, I mean, you know me. I, I'm going to ask whatever I want to ask in the middle of the big press conference. But I would like to sit down with him one-on-one because there are some nuanced things to his game that I would like to just get a little bit deeper into in terms of his instincts, in terms of him trusting his eyes, trusting his instincts, and then shooting his gun. I think he leaves some plays out on the field. I love his game, first of all. Like, I I love, love, love his game. But I think it could be even more productive if he just trusts his instincts and shoot like every single time. I think this defense is going to allow him to do that. I watched him all afternoon today. His yep. instincts were phenomenal in terms of how far he drops back before he passes the number one receiver, getting his eyes back inside, coming down on tight ends on, on drag routes or coming up on running backs on swing routes. And every single time, by the time the tight end turned and caught it, Jalen's right there. Time the running back swings out and gets it, Jalen's right there. I think his instincts are going to be phenomenal, but I would just love to sit down and talk to him about those types of things. I think back to the last game against Minnesota last year. Um, the play that kind of put the game away, Minnesota ran double post, right? And maybe we, yep. Minnesota ran double post right at him, and he saw it. He was the only one who saw it, 
He recognized it. You see him on the field calling it out like, hey, cross, 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 cross. And he let his guy go because he called it out and he went to spin back and pick up the other guy. But at some point in that process, I think either he told himself that the, they didn't they didn't hear me or they didn't get it or they didn't recognize what happened. And so I need to get back to my own guy. Well, by the time you do that, you're not covering anybody yeah. now. Yeah. But if he had done if he had stick with what he what he knew to do, he would have made a phenomenal interception because the post that came from the other side came right at him and caught the t- touchdown in the end zone right where he wanted to go. And he called it out. You, you could see it while it was happening. He's like, yo, yeah. cross, 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 cross. And then he literally spun, spun back to go get it and then just stopped midway. Man, trust your instincts and don't be afraid to be great. That's what I would tell Jalen Johnson. Don't be scared to be great because I think he has that kind of potential. I just want to see him go out there and finish those kind of plays. Those kind of picks that Ed Reed makes. Where it's like, why are you over here? You're not, you're not supposed to be nowhere exactly. near here. Your instincts told you to go over there. Trust I him remember and go the ball. The- the play exactly such a great uh, memory for you to bring that up because it was one of those moments I said just try like this kid's being brought down by these these veterans and these players and the negativity because had he just trusted his instincts then the confidence of himself would have grown. But again, mm-hmm. that culture was such a – again, yep. to you, we don't want to talk about it, but that was such a great point that you made that let's see him grow from there. Trust that. Hopefully this staff, mm-hmm. and I feel like they will, will get him to that. A lot of people are asking about this kid from Baylor, Ebner. Yep. Uh, what have you seen so far from him? I've seen a guy who – he seems to fit the bill, right? He's shifty. He's a natural pass catcher out of the backfield. He's got experience in the outside zone. And so yeah. I think that he's going to come in and fit in naturally. How many carries he's going to be able to take away from David Montgomery and Khalil Herbert, I don't know. But him being a natural pass catcher is going to help him out. And so I think that he's a guy that can come in and, and help you out on third down as well. We'll see you know, how quickly he's able to pick up blitz packages and those types of things. But his athleticism is obvious. He's familiar with the system. He doesn't seem to be lost out there. And I think that you give him time and he's going to be a guy who's going to enter that rotation. If you got three backs man, that's, and you got Justin Fields, you, you're right. doing some things right now. And so I think that, you know, his experience yeah, in the system, going. his athleticism and his ability to catch the ball in the backfield is going to give him some opportunities to contribute as a rookie. Cars. He's, you know, I, this is a little thing, and I, I I hate to harp on it, but what I found really interesting is like all the pictures we saw today, like the first few we saw the offensive line lining up, like we saw Flus sitting there with the offensive side. He was paying attention to the details that looked like of every position group. So I guess my question is, is it just in pictures, or does it really look like he is super involved? Because my I know we want to get past it, but Nagy was always like, I'm sitting with my ones on offense, maybe mm-hmm. my twos, but I'm mm-hmm. always with my ones. Flu seems to be everywhere making sure that, you know, his message is being uh, echoed by the coaches and the players. Is it really like that or is it just showing up that way in pictures? No, he seems to, he seems to really understand the importance of – the minute details of the game right in terms of not beating yourself being where you're supposed to be at all times that's offense defense special teams first team second team third team be where you're supposed to be and i think that he understands that and only that is going to give especially this team an opportunity to win football games he understands it doing the ordinary ordinary things extraordinarily well every play, right? And I think that's what it yes. takes. Do the ordinary things extraordinarily well every single play. And so he's looking at those ordinary things. Alignment, stance, key responsibility. Are you aligned properly? Is your stance what it should be? Yep. Do you understand your keys? What's your responsibility? What's your technique? He's looking at those things all the time. It's not just you know, what are my best few players doing? It's everybody. It's everybody because it's about 
a culture. It's about an expectation. And it's about making things become second nature to all 53 guys on this roster so you understand what the expectation is and you know full well when you aren't meeting it, and so do your teammates. And so you can start to hold each other accountable. You can start to call each other out. And that's thing, it, it just starts to snowball. And soon you look up and it doesn't take five and six years to set a culture. By the end of the camp, the 53 guys they choose are going to know full well what the expectation exactly. is. They're going to know what the expectation is. And so, you know, three. You can you can predict three and four wins if you want, but you give me 53 guys all pulling in the same direction, they're going to beat more than three people. They're going to beat more than three teams. It's just, it's just it's just what it is. And so you that's you you absolutely right on that observation cards. That's that's what he's doing, right? He's letting his coaches coach, and he's kind of overseeing this entire thing to understand. Man, this is what we are looking for right here. And if it's not that, go somewhere. Alignment stands key responsibility. And that may go back to some of the things we talk about with Tevin Jenkins. And we're like, hey, he's this big and he's this good and he's this athletic. I don't care. Alignment stands key responsibility. Are you doing those things or not? And if you aren't, you ain't going to be here. Sound like my dad right there, Herb. That's exactly <laughs> what he would preach. And if I was a producer on this network, I would like highlight that moment that you just spoke about. Man, at least externally, the expectations for this team are pretty low. Do you, is that something you, on day one, say to the guys, "Hey, you know, let's prove people wrong," or is that not something you address? Uh, no, I don't. I don't talk about that. I, I think that it's uh, that sets for other people to talk about. We're going to play our best football every single play, and then we're going to do it play after play after play. And it's it's the people that can do the the uh, the ordinary things extraordinary day in and day out, okay. And that's that's what wins football games, and and that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna be detail oriented with every single rep. So we're gonna go back and look at those reps today, how they started, how they finished, how they went in between, and was it full speed? Was it under control? And did they execute? And that's what we'll focus on. That's how you do it, and. I've been begging for this. I know we have a large fan base, and I would say 90% of them are amazing. 10% are just trolling, and that's fine. But the reality is the 90% know for the last, even when I was on the old network, I begged for a culture that decided everything not on politics and pay, but on their performance each and every day. That's all you can ask. Oh, you can't get that. It's the NFL. They, they get paid. They don't care. It's up to you to make them care or mm -hmm. get them the fuck out. Mm -hmm. You have the balls to do it. My uncle Sam Ritigliano, I'll tell the story. My father tells it all the time. The GM took a kid in the second round. Sam didn't want him. But said, okay, I'm going to trust you. They go to camp. The kid clearly can't play. Mm. Sam said, "Are you? what are you going to do? Are you going to hamstring me with him? I told you he can't play. Mm. Sam, what do you want to do? We got to let him go. They cut him. They own the mistake. They took heat in the press, but they own the mistake, and they went on and won, and they won their division that year. That's what you need to do to change the culture. Even that cut sends the message. Holy shit. This dude was a second round pick. He got cut. I could be next if I'm not. And performance. And when you see that clip, and, and I'm just saying, I love Herb Howard. Like, I, I do. I, I can't wait to meet you when we finally announce when we're going to come out there. We're going to have a big TTNL uh nighttime party and then we're gonna have a ttnl meet and greet tailgate let's and do it yes you we're definitely having you there we're gonna have a lot of players and ttnl personalities like this guy cars cars will be there like he was I have a hopefully he'll show up for the tailgate he he, he copped down shane will finally be uh, people are wondering if shane is like fake 
cars if we're catfishing like he, he, he isn't really. real no that is that is absolutely true he <laughs> is actually all uh computer computer generated uh he has never been never been real only jackal puts up his own dumbass joke what would you call <laughs> it nighttime party what are you 67 but but phil sorry to go back <laughs> what when you talk about when you talk about that clip did you guys yes. when when Riley talked today? You know, he, one of the key takeaways yes. I got was him talking about the Cincinnati season, and he said nobody believed we weren't talking Super exactly. Bowl. All we did was start stacking good practice after good practice after good practice, and you see where that gets you. And that's yes. as the new guy coming, the new old guy coming in, right? Like already kind of echoing the coach's sentiments, like it. Again, good yes. things happen when you've got a good locker room that all buys in. And that's why you, again, coach speak, why you don't put a ceiling on this thing. It's going to be oh, what I it's going it. to be. And, you know, why limit yourself? Why say, like, we're going to try to win 10 games? Fuck it. We're going to try to go win 17 and we'll see what happens. Why not? Oh. Listen, the Bengals lost to the Bears last year. Yeah. Do you know what yes, I mean? Like, this, 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 but, too. They, but they, 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 they just, they just kept chugging along. They got Burrow threw interceptions on like four straight passes. You know four. what I mean? Like they, okay, they Angelo just, Blackson had a pick. You know what I <laughs> mean? They just kept chugging along, and they 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 got on the same page. You get fifty three guys pulled in the same direction under the direction of a coaching staff that knows where they're going, and then that thing just kind of snowballs, man. And then you just never ever know. You just never know. <laughs> then let me do what I hired to do. <laughs> yes, you got to do what you got to do. Cole Komet, I see the question there. Cole Komet, your thoughts, where is he? How about Komet, Caesar wants to know. Is it too late for him, or what are you seeing out of him? Um, Prior to this coaching staff coming in and doing what they're doing, I would have said it's probably too late for him. I would have been like, listen, is the guy good or is he not good? You know, like, right, like right. stop talking about the potential and the flashes. Can he do it or can he not do it? But this system is going to help him a lot, right? If we're talking about yeah. running this outside zone and he's going to have to improve as a run blocker, right? He's run this outside zone. He improves as a run blocker. Now it's not a giveaway wherever he lines up, right? So you can line him up. And if he can be effective in the blocking game, now you stretch, stretch, stretch. He slips that thing. Now he's open in the middle of the field. Or you boot Justin around, he's open in the middle of the field. Now you can use, exactly. you know, his size as a mismatch for some of these, you know, smaller backers or safeties or whomever it's going to be. I think that if he's not good this year, throw the whole player away. You know what yeah. I mean? Not, not, oh. like, not like give him a couple years to learn the system. No, the system is designed for somebody like him to be very, very productive. So if he can do it, we're going to find out early and often – this year first of all can he be effective in the run game and if he can it's going to open up everything you need him to do in the passing game if you can do that you get a package down that red zone where you're looking at cole Komet, you're looking at equinemius st brown you're looking at and kill harry and you're six three six four six five you got some big targets down down, down there to, to kind of cash in when you get in the red zone and so it's yes. now or never for cole Komet. i was just about done with him. I'm not going to lie, but I'm going to give him another season, just another season, another half season, to to say is he half good or is he not good. Well, I mean that's Ooh. he because that early part of the season, right? Like he's going to go up against some pretty good linebackers, right? In San Francisco, it's going to go against Kendrick. So very early on, you're going to find out the player that he is if he's made any sort of step or leap or not so you're gonna like by week eight you're gonna be like okay yeah. he is the guy or he's he's not we're gonna be looking for another tight end i agree with that herb our guys will be out there saturday um our producers alan bratcher the bratch patch That's lame. with his partner with his partner alex acevedo mm -hmm. the swag man maybe he'll bring some swag out there for you i already sent you some swag though yeah but I, I, should have worked. I, got, I got my TTNL shirt. Yes, you better rock better that rock. one day at a presser. That would be oh. great. 
Excuse can't wait me. to meet Acevedo one day. That'll be nice. <laughs> yes, yeah, so hopefully they get over there to to meet you. TTNL is always family, and you're gracious with your time. How are you on time? Because it's hey, ten man, listen, east. If we if we talking ball, we talking ball. It's all good. All right, I just I don't. <laughs> Everyone always yells at me because even my wife and and Kenneth Davis's wife yell at me too because I just get people talking. I, I remember uh, one guest is like, "I give, I'll give you thirty minutes." I go, "Okay." He was on for two hours. He's like, "You know what?" Texted me after. I had such a blast. That's what we try to create here: talking ball. Um, I've been talking ball of- all day. I've been talking ball since nine o'clock this morning. <laughs> Like I had like that all day long, so I'm I'm good. I, mean, I, I was love doing it too. With y'all. y'all keep it on it, and y'all know what y'all talking about, and it's just fun to talk. And y'all got you know y'all got a great following who also knows the game, and they make good comments and ask good questions, and they challenge the ideas, and it's it's fun. It's, it's fun to talk about, man. Let's talk about. I might need to refresh my drink here in a bit, but let's talk about. Hey, refresh your drink. Take it. I have three drinks here because I'm in my studio, but I have no soundproofing yet i'm in my house finally i'm finally in my studio it's coming together but slowly but surely anyway that doesn't matter what does matter is the bears have a fullback and yes <laughs> and i'm excited because i'm curious to see you know i've watched a lot of tape on blazing game I just love that name. Claudio does too, because his blazing game is <laughs> is on fire. <laughs> is that a marijuana <laughs> reference on this show, Phil? I are you kidding it. me? <laughs> Isn't it legal there? Can't we? Oh just no, no, not at all. No. Oh my God, where is it? Where What's is marijuana? It? <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck that he smokes weed. They all smoke weed. Smoke weed every day. Yeah. Now, since we've sprayed our love of brisker all over the wall of... Ah, <laughs> it's a drop! It's, it's totally not You're welcome. Clear. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's terribly foggy, and you shouldn't have put it up. That's because it's... iPhone sucks. That's why. <laughs> HD. Android. HD. God. I'm just a fan. I'm not a football... Yes, we know, Joe. Blazing game. Big fullback. What are your thoughts on the addition of him, and how has he looked thus far this offseason? Is he going to have a bigger role than people expect, or is it just, you know, punt coverage up man and maybe short downs and following the Michael Burton experience? (laughs) That should have been the guy I mentioned when we asked – who could do more than expected, right? Like who who might be the guy nobody's talking about? It should have been him. I love that the Bears have brought on a fullback, and the dude looks like a beast. He's built like a tank, but he moves like a running back. He gets you back into that mind of the William Floyds of the world. You know what I mean? Oh well, I used to like the, the Klein Slossers, the Corey Schlesingers. I like those guys. Oh you know what God. I mean? The neck like, roll. Like, yeah, yes. I, I, I like those guys. I hate that the fullback has kind of been phased out of the game to some degree. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be critical. I think it's going to help in every aspect of the game. He's going to help David Montgomery. But then also, we talk about that boot. That oh, boot's yeah. going to come back to him, right? It, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come back to him. And now you've got this tank out here in the one-on-one in the, on the side with the corner, and he's going to yes. kill him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's gonna kill him like that tight end did Chris Conte a couple years back on the sideline. Like it's not like it's <laughs> it's 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 gonna be really really good to see him out there. I think he's gonna help in every single phase for the Bears offensively. They're gonna have to figure out which package they use most. It's gonna be hard to get. You know, you talk about him, Cole Komet, Bayless Jones. You know what what's gonna be you know their mainstay. But I think that when he's on the field, he is going to be a lethal weapon for the Bears in the blocking game. And in the play action game, I love, love, love that they brought him on. Look at that. I just was thinking about blazing game, and all of a sudden, 
the hype train of blazing game claudio i know he's a big darnell mooney fan but a blazing game jersey might be in his future <laughs> <laughs> i'm excited about the what you're talking about the fullback off boot in the flat i still could see jason mckee and antonio carter remember him cars oh, yeah. Yeah. just That's turning amazing. up and just bear, bulldozing and getting first downs. And it goes back to what you two have both said with the Bengals and what Riley Reef said. You start moving chains, you start getting red zone opportunities. Red zone opportunities means scoring. Scoring means wins. And this is how you change a whole dynamic of a culture. Everybody, and, and everybody's like, against a fullback but if you're doing these things with a quarterback that is dynamic and you give them those types of weapons ah, to hear blazing game is is showing up like that is definitely someone i'm going to be excited to see on tape and see how he does now smash the like button if you're sitting there all 485 of you give us a smash on youtube if you're not subscribed to the Tape Never Lies Network, I don't know what you're doing. Do that. Also, follow Herb at Herb Howard right here. Herb, what's your uh, at on Twitter? Because I'm not on Twitter. It is, it is at Herb Howard 411. Herb Howard 411. Follow Herb on Twitter. Definitely follow me. I'm I'm uh gotta I just I just prom I just promised my guy Nick Moriano that I'm gonna get so much better at Twitter, right? Last year he was like, you gotta tweet, 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 tweet. It's like nah. So this year I'm starting to like make sure I tweet or I'm putting out, you know, when I when I write a column, make sure I put it up on Twitter or those types of things. So definitely, definitely follow me on Twitter. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And I just love talking ball with y'all. So let's just keep it rolling. TTNL heads, make sure you do that as well as smash the like button. Follow Herb great human being and a great follow now we talked about the tight end i want to talk about this veteran tight end they bring in o'shaughnessy now mm -hmm. is this guy i've always seen this guy do a great play and then he does some dirty work is this guy going to be maybe an under the radar type guy for this offensive philosophy or is it way too early to tell so far i think i think he's a guy that 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 brings you some versatility and could be a, a a very useful you know number two tight end i'm not saying he's i'm not expecting him to be like this game changer or anything like that but i think he can do a lot of positive things for you, you go two tight ends i think he's going to be able to you know do some things for you in the blocking game but also slip out and kind of be almost forgotten about in the passing game and can and can make some plays for you. So I think that that's a that's a one of those underrated signings that could ultimately pay some dividends for this team. Yeah, I'm interested cars in the tight end room because they could they they let go of our boy Jesper. Jesper. But Chase Allen Chase Allen is another name yeah. that I'm intrigued by from this offseason cuz he's got the size and a, a few different things. You're right. Like that, that tight end room is Cole Komet, who's a question mark in and of himself, and then even yep. <laughs> bigger question marks behind it. So that's that's going to be a fun one to 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 watch. I got it up. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, he did, Claudio. <laughs> He's Claudio's excited about the tight end room. I am too. The kid from the Giants, I think, is like six seven. Former oh, uh, basketball player, Rice and John. Yeah, I want to. Mm -hmm. I want to see how these guys. I still remember Fendi on a bun. I don't know if you two. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I remember him. <laughs> I remember being excited greatest... about him too. I'm not gonna lie. I was so <laughs> excited. I go, this is this kid is going to be a a, a thing. He's going to be like Marcus Robinson. And then he's he dropped gonna that have preseason that preseason touchdown in the oh end zone, and I was God. like, "Never mind." And <laughs> he uh... dropped the <laughs> easiest catch. He was wide open. Uh, when you see the head coach go like this, yeah, it's never a good, <laughs> sign. Good. A good sign. It's not good. No. <laughs> hopefully, one of these tight ends breaks out. Uh, I know everybody. Yo, Phil, 
Can yeah. I say something real quick, man? I don't, yes. I don't, I don't mean to try yes. to hop in right like that, but I saw a question in the comments about um, a DN mm -hmm. that that could be intriguing, other than you know Quinn and Gibson. I like Gibson. I think he's going to continue to ascend, but I'm interested to see what happens with Charles Snowden. I think that yeah. he could be okay. the next guy wow. in that lineage of um, Roy Robertson Harris. And Travis Gibson, those were two guys who came in small school, smaller school guys, undersized, yep. out of position, and then they worked on their bodies, and then they developed. We saw Roy Robertson Harris parlay that into a handsome contract. We see Travis Gibson continue to ascend. He's on that same trajectory as Roy Robertson Harris was, and I think that Charles Snowden could be the next guy that is similar to those two. He's long. He's a little bit white, a little bit more wiry than those two guys, but yep. he's got that natural bend to him. And I think that as, as he continues to progress, hopefully this season he contributes in a way kind of like we saw Travis contribute last year. I don't know that he's going to get you know six and a half, seven, eight sacks, but I just want to see him get in consistently. Obvious passing situations. And let him get after the passer. I think that he's going to be a guy who can help. I also think he can be a guy that can help you in the special teams in terms of could he become that Israel Adonis type guy who's going to get yeah. you a lot of blocks. He's very long like that. He's lean, so he can kind of split and get his arms up. I think he can help you in a few different ways. And so I'm I'm expecting some things out of Charles Snowden. So if I have to pick a, a DN that you know that isn't one of the two starters, it'll be that guy. I, I'm I'm intrigued by Charles Snowden. I really am. Look at that. There's a guy. Did he work on his body? Is, have you seen a growth in him in regards to how he looks professionally? Like a year in pro. Yeah, he doesn't look. He doesn't look quite as thin anymore. He doesn't look quite like last year. Okay. He was like thin, thin. Like he would have yeah. been like if this was he college, you'd like have like red shirt. You know what I mean? Like red shirt and let him get in the track. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, this yeah. year he's still a you know wiry kind of guy, but you can see that he's put on the mask, that muscle mask. You can see he looks. Stronger, okay. he looks like he belongs on a defensive line now, at least. And so, you know, he's he'll he'll continue to develop and get stronger, put on some little bit more weight. But he's definitely obviously worked on it, and I think that you know he has an opportunity to be a contributor. You know, not not dominant, not a huge difference maker or anything like that, but just a contributor this year, and then maybe progress. You know, going forward. That's exciting to hear. Uh, a lot of people, including myself, were excited when the Bears signed him out of Virginia as an undrafted. Roy Robertson Harris was one of my favorite. I thought they used him completely wrong. He should have been on the edge opposite Mac, and you would have seen destruction and mayhem. Like yeah, these coaches, just I don't know <laughs> politics all the time, but. Like you said, he earned a handsome contract out of UTEP. That's where he was from, Roy hey. Robertson Harris. Let's hey. go to more questions from the chat. Uh, you fans have been lighting it up. Was there any truth? Alex Acevedo was uh, Eberflus, excuse me, doing up downs with the team today. Was that something that was going that. on? I, I didn't, I didn't see, see that. that. I didn't see that at all. Man. Maybe I'm not. I'm not saying he didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I, I can't co that. Now. I didn't see that. Darrington <laughs> Evans, are you are you thinking this kid has a shot on this football team? The running back, no. Darrington Evans. No, I'm not. Thinking no, that. I know. No, listen. We just got done talking about Tristan Ebner, right? If he's yeah. gonna be the third back, you got a full back. You got. It's just, I mean, eventually yeah. you just run out of space. I'm not knocking the kid, but you eventually just run out of space. And every year there are these camp darlings, and everybody's like, yo, this guy's gonna be. No, he's not. Yeah, right? exactly. no, no, he's not gonna be. And and so it it, it I kind of I'm no, I just don't think I just no. Again, I'm not trying to say anything bad about the kid. I he said may it go too. and have a phenomenal career. But no. That's that's Shane's boy. <laughs> Well, we always joke about it, right? Like, who's the wide receiver most likely to be the Tanner Gentry darling, yeah. right? Like, who's, yeah. who's the one guy that's going to catch a meaningless Dane touchdown in the fourth quarter? Yeah. Dane Sazenbacher. <laughs> uh, Christian. Remember that kid? 
Oh. Oh my God. What was his name? He had the dreads, lanky. Anyway. Rodney Adams last year. That was oh, last man. year, yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Gets in the game. Remember the drop? Oh, it's brutal. Like, oh my God. Oh you my can't God. drop that. You got your shot, man. You can't drop that ball. Oh my God. The oh. only other guy, the only guy that's ever worked out for was like Cam Meredith. He's the only oh, guy yeah. who went from like Camp Darling to actually productive player, parlayed that into another deal with the Saints. Like, you know what I mean? But oh, other yeah. than that, these guys That's tend to. That's a good to, point. Like, That's a good really. trivia question. Jackal would have gotten it, right? Well, that's why, because I laugh, because everybody, you know, all we've heard all off season is Finky, 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 right? Like the he's Notre the one Dame to kid? watch. Yeah, the Notre Dame kid, and I have a feeling like he's going to be that guy who's going to catch that meaningless touchdown, and everyone's like, he's got to make the team, and then that won't happen. What about uh, Daz Newsom? I see uh, this kid, obviously, out of North Carolina. <laughs> What are your thoughts on him? No, he's smiling here. <laughs> I, I, no, I, I'm I'm smiling because I like Daz. I like okay. Daz, and I've got a bet going on with about four other people on the beat. We were standing out there at Minicat one day, and it was hot, <laughs> and I was bored, and I was like, look, Daz is going to catch 40 balls this year. And they were like, okay. what? And anytime I, say, anytime I say something and people are like, what? I feel the need to double down on it, even if I don't believe it. Let me let me just tell y'all a secret. Just just just, just amongst us and five no of our best friends. No one, yeah, no one. I, I will take advantage of this at some point, Herb. That this and it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's fine. I don't think Dad's gonna catch forty balls this year. I don't even know that Dad's gonna make the roster. But okay. I, I like Dad's, and so I bet I bet like um, Jason Leisure and. Yep. Just a bunch of guys, maybe like 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 fish band. I just bet a bunch of guys. I was like, listen, I'll buy I'll buy, I'll buy your beer if Daz doesn't get forty. So I'm just, I'm just gonna go ahead and get a case of beer now and just start handing them out. Again. <laughs> <laughs> just just bring a case of Old Milwaukee's best, and you didn't promise what quality what quality beer. Just give them give them the good stuff. You know, it is what it is. But I, I do like Daz to be honest with you. I I, I like him. Um, I think that he plays with this kind of flair, this confidence. I just don't know that it, that it's gonna pan out for him here, but I I, I do wish him well because I, I like I like the kid a lot. The story for the off season has been Darnell Mooney and his relationship with Justin Fields. You've seen Mooney now. Uh, I'm the first guy to admit when they drafted Darnell Mooney, I'm like, this is Bernard Barian, one trick pony. He's been the complete utter opposite probably the best blocker yeah. on the football field i'm talking mm. including linemen i'm serious mm. this kid is not mm. afraid he plays to the whistle with technique he's tough he's not afraid to mix it up in the middle he has been everything is advertised the bears i felt like have gone out of their way to make an endorsement of him as you know, the poster child of their offense. And then you have his relationship with Justin. Now it's early, but you've seen him. What does he look like body-wise? And what are your thoughts on him? Is I think he's focused. Yeah, I think he's focused too. I think I think we're just going to have to get used to his frame. Like that, yeah. that's who he is. I don't know that he has any room to put on, you know, 20 pounds of muscle or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I think you can see him getting a little bit more tone. He's getting a little bit stronger. He's going to he's going to always get the absolute most out of whatever he has, right? Whatever is in his body, <laughs> whatever is perfect. in his like he's going to get the absolute most. So as strong as somebody his frame can be, he's that strong, right? As as yeah. fast as he can be, he's that fast. As much as he can possibly know about this playbook by now, he knows that much. Like he's going to get the absolute most out of everything he has. And so you know that that's his body. It's kind of it's gonna it's gonna be what it is. But he's focused. He's determined. He is the Bears' best receiver, right? He's gonna have okay. to get targets. He's gonna have to make plays. I will stop short of saying that I believe he is a true upper echelon number one receiver. I don't believe that, right? I, I don't. Right. I think I think he could be one of the best number two receivers in the league if we had a number one. 
So now I would say he's just a one, like a one B, you know what I mean? Or, you know, yeah. bottom half, number one. I don't think, I, I think there are other receivers who have, I mean, other teams who have two or three, you look at the Rams. The Rams got four guys yeah. who would be the Bears' number one receiver. You know what I mean? Right. And and the, the, the Bengals, those are the two Super Bowl teams. So if you're talking about what you're aiming for, both of those teams have multiple guys who would be the Bears' number one receiver. And so I love Mooney. I think he's going to be productive. I think he's going to have another good season for the Bears. Stop just short of calling him the true elite number one receiver. I don't believe that. Um, but I do do – uh, I, I really do love him, um, and I think he maximizes his potential. He's going to be a, a, a really, really important piece for the Bears. So to you, go well, ahead. to piggyback sorry. onto that, so, you know, I think we all can agree, right, the, the locks for the wide receiver room are Mooney, Pringle, and Bayless. If you had right now Great stack in the odds, who do you think, like, I, I would imagine they're probably going to keep six. Who would you think yeah. are in the lead positions for the other th- three wide receiver play, uh Position. I'd say e, I'd say EQ because he knows the offense and has the size. Yep. Um, I think that you know, Getsy, they brought him over here for a reason, right? Mm-hmm. He knows him well. He knows the system. So I would say EQ. I would say and kill, um, just because Thanks. you know they leveraged the draft pick on him and he has first round ability. He's highly motivated. We talked to him today. He was like, "I've got a huge chip on my shoulder. I think you know this is a fresh start for me. It's a good fit." So I would say those would be the top five, six. It's kind of up for grabs, right? That I think that's the spot that you know all those other guys kind of got to be gunning for. We're talking about Daz Newsom. We're talking whoever, even whoever you want it to be, right? They've yeah. got to be looking at. They've got to be looking at that sixth spot to say, I, I can do this, and then obviously we understand if you're the sixth receiver. You got to be a special teams guy too, right? So who can yeah. do that, right? Who can be that special teams guy as well out of the rest of those guys? And Nimba, so I think it'll largely Webster, come down to that. The kid Webster. Yeah, I mean he 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 yeah. he can he can he can contribute on special teams, and so yes, you know that that becomes you know a, a leg up for him. But you know I think th- those are the first five, the three you name cars, and then EQ and 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 Kill would be. What I would say would be the top five right now, and then that sixth spot is you got to go get it. I was happy to see – sorry, I was happy to see Harry's interview today. Like, it, yeah. it, it didn't come across as brash. It just came across as a guy who is confident and knows what he has to do, right? It's, it's always this fine line before, like, you talk too much about how great you are. And this guy was like, well, he's like I want to prove it to everybody. Like, that, that felt, like, genuine. And I'm, so, yeah, I'm – He's one that I, I wild card for this offseason because who knows what he's going to be. But there is, to your point, there is really good potential with what he could do. Agreed. And you you got some player like Pettis they're talking about. I know Sharp is on guy. what? He's in the physically. Oh, he, he I think Sharp, Sharp, Sharp is on um, not 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 yeah. yeah, he's somebody. And the other kid that's always been on this roster, he's on the other side of the ball. I was gonna ask you about him, but you know, what's his name? Michael Thomas. Is that what's his name? The corner. The the, the DB. Oh, the Michael Joseph. Michael, Michael Joseph. Oh, Michael, Michael Joseph. Jo- Michael Joseph has been on this yeah. roster forever. Yeah. Out of a small school, I think he won like the Walter Payton Award in Division Three. I think that was mm-hmm. his story. But Michael Joseph, again, he's also, I believe, on the non football injury so correct i <laughs> i'm dying to see this kid he's been a story here forever um yeah, he keeps making the same i guess for some for some reason he's obviously yeah. impressing you know at least enough to stick around and you know he's carved out i think what, like three three maybe four year pro career right now so yeah keep going. He's, a, he's been on that practice squad uh the guy i want to ask you about though that no one's really talking about is you know, he was drafted in the sixth, seventh round last year's Tonga. How do you see him fitting here? And is he worked on his body as well? Or is he going to be somebody that maybe doesn't fit this scheme? Because I love the dude. Like what I saw of coming out of BYU and then what he did last year when given an opportunity. But with 
I don't know. I'm not there. So your thoughts on him? No, I, I like Tonga. I think he's just a big, strong, yeah. immovable object, right? I think that yeah. he's going to have to be critical for the Bears on first and second down. Yes. If I have to identify the area I'm most concerned about on defense, it's the interior of that defensive line. I think Quinn and Gibson are going to be fine. I think yeah. the young kids will get it, will figure it out in the secondary. But the interior of that defensive line is a question mark, right? I, I, I've not sold on Justin Jones. I was not impressed by him yesterday, right? And and but I'll stick with Tonga right now. I think him and Angelo Blackson are gonna have to be key on first down to stuff the run. You gotta earn the right to rush the passer, right? Can Absolutely. we stop the run? Kyrus Tonga is going to be critical in stopping the run. He's gonna have to take that no spot and just really kind of Anchor, right? Can he take on two guys? You talk about Roquan and Morrow. Those are yeah. fast guys, instinctive. They want to get sideline to sideline. They want to get downhill. But they aren't huge guys, right? You can't have guards and centers getting up on them. So who's going to keep them clean? And that has to be a guy like Kyrus Tonga. So I think that, you know, he continues to develop. I don't know that he's ever going to be – this penetrating force either in the passing game or even in the run game, but it doesn't really have to be mm -hmm. just I'm right here. And when you run past me, I'm going to give you a hug, right? Or I'm <laughs> going to just take on these two dudes and yes. I'm, I, I, I might make 10 tackles all year. I'm he surprises take you with some penetration skills. That's why I was like, if this he does, works, if he works on his body a little bit, like just lose 10 and work on that, he can, Play yeah. some three technique reps. To your point, protecting though those inside backers. So I'm excited because I I put these things out there to you too because I want you to keep an eye on it. And then when you know you see something yeah. like that, you can ask the coach like Tonga. You know what is his thoughts on? Because you know a lot of the time everything is the goddamn focus on. Goddamn Robert Quinn and Roquan's oh, contract. Right. And oh, it's like, right. I want to see some of these, like Angelo Blackson. He's had some really good tape from last year. How does oh. he transition to this year? Is he going to be a three technique? Is he going to be out there playing football at, you know, eating up double teams? Where How are they going to play him? Mario Edwards is the chat. Here's yeah. a guy with a lot of talent. You know, he's gotten – uh, some penalties with him, but hey, yeah, he was working with a coach and a culture that was ops, it wasn't even there. So at least he yeah. showed me some fire, I would tell people. And he's getting to the quarterback. How, yeah. you know, how has he came into the this offseason as well? Is he somebody you're, you're thinking they're going to push out to edge or they're going to keep him inside? I think he's probably going to end up staying inside because they need him inside. Um, now okay. that 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 depends on you know the development of a Charles Snowden of a Dominic Robinson, and then maybe the necessity becomes that Mario has to play more on the edge. But even then, his versatility is valuable to them. And so, if, if you got a guy who can play up and down that D line, it's a really really good thing. And so, I think his versatility is going to yes. allow them to do a lot of different things, and he's going to be a valuable piece to what they want to do. Um, remember Stephen Pia. Of course you remember. Steve. Oh, yes, oh yeah. yeah. Oregon State. Yeah. Um, that That's the comp I got for Ky for Kyrus, right? I'm, I don't know yeah. if I'm just saying that because they, like, have similar body types and all that. But I, I, that's, that's – that's yeah, right? That's just kind of what I think about when I think about him. I want to say Stephen Pye was a little bigger, but he also seemed like he was a little lighter on his feet. I think that – Yeah. yeah. Pye was yeah, a lighter. Pye was a lighter – he was God. a better pass rusher. He was a than, three yeah. tech coming yeah. off. He kind of was yeah. just in my scouting of him because I liked him. A, I a really poor man to Lodi Nada. Yeah, that he where where I see more Vita Vea with Tonga, a poor man's mm. Vita Vea. Vita that Vea. kind of <laughs> When I, I love that name. Listen, I don't want to hear anything else. You said Vita Vea. We're going to leave that there because that's a name I love. And that's, you <laughs> heard it here. Phil I says Tonga it. is Vita Vea. And, we're, and that's no. how we're going. Poor man's Vita Vea. He, 
listen, the sky's the limit. No yeah. ceilings, cars. No, no <laughs> ceilings. The reality is, I am excited about Tonga. I don't want him to be pushed out to pasture because he is big and doesn't fit what we do. Like I'm seeing a penetrator when when he was out there, he made plays. He just mm-hmm. wasn't out there enough, in my opinion, mm-hmm. to, to give it an opportunity. But again, that is it, even Mario Edwards. Every fucking time he was in the game, he's making something happen. He also was having some penalties, but the reality was there was so much undiscipline. Yeah. And we would pick up a guy off the street. He'd be a captain that next week. And like, this culture is so dumb. So that's Tonga, also a weird thing. I hope I hope Flus no. doesn't do that. This like, I don't is, get the sense listen, that he will. This I rotating have, captain thing. That means we talk don't about have a bet. I'm with no, you. No, I, hate that. I don't. If you like, rotate captains. You, you shouldn't don't have coach. Captains. Yeah, you shouldn't coach. You shouldn't have captains because you don't have the go-between. It goes back to the mafia. You have to have your consigliare, and you have to have the the guys underneath him that are going to set the tone. It's always about the message and the culture and the locker room. As cars, you were talking about how important it is. You don't just say, okay, we're playing Tampa – this dude we got we're from Tampa. Anto- we're going to sign Antonio Brown this week, yeah, and he gonna is going to take him captain. the cap. I don't oh think he God. is because I think when you look at the, the yeah, press I've, conference, I've... Who, who, the guys that stand up the most and start holding other players accountable, right, yes. and take and yeah. naturally believe take in their philosophy, those are going to be the captains, and I think there's going to be – very little question like other than justin right who i think we can pretty much etch in stone right now whoever else they name like we're gonna sit there and go makes complete sense let's, i totally let's play can. a game cars each one of us names a captain you want to play this game yeah okay i i think it's a great game so our guest goes first <laughs> we all know justin fields is a given right so Mm -hmm. let's go off of justin because that's a layup so who who would you name a captain i'll take the other layup it's the guy we opened the show with it's roquan roquan smith there you go there you go yeah i'm not gonna argue with that 58 deserves a c yeah does he get the c if he holds out cars no, because my my guess was going to be Moro was going to be the one because he's because he's got he's the one calling the plays right or calling so the stuff out of the huddle. Plays. So I think and it's a little thing. I go off of like Marinelli who knows him right and called him out on that nineteen twenty football drive. Oh, thing. Yeah, I he think did. he's got a lot of respect in the locker room. I don't. So I think I one of those two, if not both, are probably going to be captains. Well, you only get one. So I, he chose We're Roquan. Going. I'll choose. I'll choose Moro. Okay, I'm gonna choose the guy on my chest, David Montgomery. I believe when coach goes to sleep at night, that's what you want leading your team. This is the true professional. Now, there's other. The layup is Lucas Patrick as well. I believe he'll be yeah. a captain. I really do. But if me, I'm playing the game, David Montgomery is everything. I believe he is going to put so many haters in the streets with their fucking tissues. That's how he's going to handle that. And he fits perfectly for what it is they want to do. So these are three guys. You got Moro, Roquan, Justin Fields and David Montgomery. We're when Shane would have said Justin Fields, so we'll give that. <laughs> he would have said Trenton Gill, the punter. We know how big of a <laughs> has Trenton looked guy. good. We- <laughs> no, he looked terrible today. See, yeah. see, like seriously, I, I I I commented on it several times. The wind seemed to be really taking his balls. Like I like like dude. Oh no! It it it, oh. it, it he finally hit one. And it, it boomed. I was like, finally, he hit one. Like, because I was watching him 
And I saw him like shank one. I was like, oh, whatever, you know? Right. But then I just started watching him, and it was punt after punt. It was just like not very far and not very accurate. And it was like, yo, I don't like this, right? And oh, I was boy. telling um, Adam Johns, I'm like, yo, this dude is – he's steady, like, shanking punts. And the wind is just taking his ball and doing whatever it wants to do. And I was like, I thought that was going to go in the bushes. Like it was that. Yeah, it was like that. Aaron, but you know, maybe he'll, 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 he'll be, I mean, he he looks like Pat O'Donnell. <laughs> yeah, there was some wind gusts. You know what I mean? And you know, there, but it's it's Chicago. You better learn how to punt. That's what dude. I'm saying. Like he you know what I mean? Like and so he, he's got time. He's got he's got time. But he I mean, he Are looks like Pat O'Donnell. There's... They gave him his number, but he's not the same guy. I think, are you concerned that there's no competition for him and it's just like his job? Yeah, yeah I'm very it's concerned weird. by that. He's a rookie, and I know you I know you spent the draft pick on him, but at least bring in a, a cap leg to kind of push the kid. Like, don't just say, hey, you kid, you're the Bears punter. Hey, right. I don't like that. I don't like that. Because then you're going to be scrambling to find a punter on the street later after everybody else has had an opportunity to see what they look like as camp legs right. and you haven't even had that opportunity. So bring in a couple guys and have some kickoffs and, and see what's to it, some punt offs and see what's to it. It's I just want somebody who looks like he could grow facial hair, which uh, Trenton does not look like he can do. So that Cars is calls CJ, him his twin. Unless, unless the, CJ, unless yes. the coaches want him to work on punting the ball 15 yards off the field, then I, that's not what he was doing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It, <laughs> I would trust Herb Howard over Will DeWitt. I'll I'll say that. Well, <laughs> I'm I mean, not afraid to say that. So I, Herb is it's, watching it's this first practice. The, uh, the kid, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure he'll get better. I'm just telling you. I watched him that's kick all no you can less go than on, forty though. balls today, and I was like, ooh, no, I don't like 40. it. I don't like it at all. It wasn't like twelve or seven. No. No, like 40, 40 punts because he, he he got my attention and I was just stuck watching him like, yo, when is he going to hit a punt? It was so and bad. He ended up hitting one watching. like later. It was oh, it wasn't good. God. It wasn't good. It was just day one. I'm not not throwing the kid away, but it wasn't good and they should bring in some competition. Hey, you heard it here first. It's something you guys, you fans going out to camp, take a close look at it. Everybody overlooks it, but to, well, now to we're Herb's a three point, win team. I mean, that's that's just disappointing. You need to team. be able to <laughs> punt the ball, man. This Listen, if you're talking about drafted. winning the game, I would never draft a fucking punter. I would no. always wait. No, I would always wait. I could scout the uh, Jesus. Pat O'Donnell was six round, wasn't he? Yeah, I, he was six I didn't round. like Pat O'Donnell either. I <laughs> would find a good punter. That is going to go out there and knock the shit out of the ball, but also be consistent. I think that's the most important. So, like Brad Maynard, right? He he didn't have a he didn't have a huge leg, but he put it where he, he wanted knew, it to go. Yeah. Yes, forty-one to forty-three yards every time. Every like time, it dropping it in, <laughs> and let me tell you, that helps a fucking defense completely when yeah. you've dropped it at the seven. Or the three, obviously the one we all know, but inside yeah. that ten consistently. Now your defense yeah. is like, come on, motherfuckers. Okay, we know you're running here. Now we're getting a third down. Now we're getting off the field. The punter did that. Yeah, so, well, yeah, it's an important thing. I prefer a it. Tots Sauron type, you know, with that huge leg. But if you yeah. don't got a huge leg and accuracy, give me. Give me adequate leg and extreme accuracy every time. Like, I need that, especially when you're talking about this team. This team is going to try and win close football games. They're going to try and keep it close, you know, play time possession, field time, yeah. time possession, field position games. You can't have a guy shanking punts. You can't, you can't do that, right? This team doesn't have that luxury to give guys short fields because of the punter like we need Absolutely. somebody who can flip the field for us again i'm not throwing the kid away yet i'm not saying he can't do it i'm saying i watched him kick today and it was bad get me marquise I, king if who for whatever reason oh has my been god out of the just league. read my mind that's the guy to this day that i would Why? the fact that he's been blackballed from the league 
that bring that fucking guy in. You're building a new culture. That dude could kick the shit out of the football. I, accurately too like accurately confidently he might have been a little too arrogant for some people but for me i want that like that would be amazing name drop there he's been blackballed look yeah. up look him up unbelievable his career average is 46 at point seven <laughs> yards of punt like, like that is Come that on. is insane. And he's sitting on the nowhere's land. For what? Man. For something he said to the owner or something? No, it was – what happened in – who was the coach? He had a thing with the coach when he went from Oakland to Denver, and something happened. I can't remember was it what Fangio it was. Fangio or before No, Fangio? it was before Fangio. Oh, um, my God. He had anyway. some sort of attitude thing. Uh I can't remember what it was. Vance. Oh, it was Vance Joseph. Oh, Vance Joseph and him. Yes. Mm. Listen, I would. That's a great name. Get him in Chicago. Give him a tryout. I was looking at the kid from uh, San Diego State. I guess he went. Ended up getting drafted later. But listen, punters, I can find a good one, a great one. He also, yeah, they're right. He took shots at John Gruden. Uh, on the Denver radio station. And I guess the the radio host and him got into a little, listen, make mistakes, talk to him. We'll see. We'll, we'll figure it out. But at the same Marquette point. Marquette King is exactly who we're talking about. But at Marquette the same point, King. if he, you know, Herb, you don't necessarily have to hear this, but if he wants to accidentally get in a fight with David Haw, I'm okay <laughs> with that as a thing to happen. <laughs> Um, I would be like, I'm not speaking for everyone. I'm just saying like, throw down on him. And I'm, I'm, I, we've got your back. That's, that's how we're going to go with that. <laughs> Listen, Herb Howard has been so generous with your time tonight. We've talked a lot of ball and we got some, a little bit of business, but you can stay and chill out with us as we move forward in the show. We have a major announcement that we're about to break here uh, on TTNL that we are adding somebody to the roster sheet here at TTNL. And I want to make sure we do it before the night is over. So, Herb, (laughs) if you have to go, that is perfectly fine. And I want to, you know, thank Thank you you for your time. I'll step out of y'all way and let y'all handle y'all business, man. I don't want to be in the way of the moment. Let me get out your way, but I appreciate the the time. Y'all have been generous with y'all time. For me, I've enjoyed it. You know, I truly, truly appreciate it. It's always fun, fun talking ball with y'all. Can't wait to y'all, to y'all do the TTNL weekend or whatever it's going to be. I'll be there uh, hanging out with y'all. So again, thanks for having me, man. I truly, truly enjoyed it. Herb, honestly, we have to do this more often. The fans are right. Uh, it, it, it's on me. Jackal is supposed to be our guest wrangler, and he does a shitty job reminding me of get her back. I love, I love it. I, I fucking got to think for this guy too. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but we always have to have Herb on, guys. Absolutely. So we have plenty of producers now to take over Jackal's spot to help out here. And uh, I'm just playing Jackal. But Herb, thank you so yes, much. Thank man. you very much. You honestly, before you. I let you go, you do such a great job asking the appropriate football question in the midst of the chaos of trying to find a headline. I believe you do our fans justice in those moments, including me. And I can't wait for Bears Hour Live to begin so I can hear you ask Coach Eberflus that first question after the Bears-Niners game. It's going to be great. We'll have you back on before that. I want you on on final cuts. I want your thoughts, if that's cool. Put you on the spot. <laughs> I think do it. Let's do can. it. Let's see where Tevin Zinkins hey. is at. Exactly. Absolutely. That's gonna be the point. That's gonna be the story. All right, for sure. I'll be back, man. Right. You know, anytime you hit me, man, we can get it done. So it's all good. Thank you so much, Thanks, man. Sir. 
Herb Howard. Follow him at Herb Howard 411 on Twitter. I know some of you went out there and just did it right away that you did it. And you liked the show, but honestly, the dude is a dude. I like when reporters can get down. You heard him cuss, but you also hear the passion and the truthfulness. I think in this day and age, a lot of people want to copy and mimic and do certain things. I like people that are themselves. And Herb Howard yeah, agreed. is truly himself. I'm, I'm serious. Just that was so much fun. It flew by. I looked up at the time and I felt bad for this guy because I'm like, we got to get some business. So, yes, I've kind of teased this. Everybody, I got to say this. You know, Shane's not here. Who? Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Shane's not here. And I hope he's feeling better, but. This network, we take a lot of pride, and there's been a lot of like drama and narratives and painting of cars, Phil and Shane, more so me and Shane than car. I think everyone loves cars, but there is an a there is an appropriate recognition of when someone wants to be a part of you. And you know that, you know, that is important to me. When I see talent, I want people that want to be a brotherhood, togetherness, all of that stuff. So when this person reached out to me and was like, listen, I would love to be a part of you guys. And I have ideas and I know the guy is a talent. Then I sat back and thought about it. And we talked with Shane and I, and listen, it was just a win-win to do this. And before I even mention the person's name, I have to bring him out in the TTNL way because I'm certainly so excited to bring this guy onto the team and the network. And I think the fans are going to be excited because this guy is not only a great producer of content, video, graphics, but he's also a great person. And that's why he's Absolutely. coming on tonight. We've gotten rid of a lot of negativity with Matt Nagy and so on and so forth. I want this season to be about positivity, brotherhood, and everything involved. And this guy, once he reached out to me, uh, it was a win-win for the network. And I think you fans are going to be super excited with this addition to the network because it's not going to be just for this show. He is going to be a big part. My right-hand man. Don't be jealous, Bratcher. TTNL fans, much like Ryan Poles, just thinking about Phil and Shane are always looking to improve the network. Shane, this is Angela Marino from Wong for By any means necessary. And this dude doesn't even need a passport to shine. Normally. You could hear him in the mornings talking about a variety of topics. But this versatile stalwart is now ready for prime time. Bears fans, TTNL fans, get up out your seat and welcome home the new lead producer of TTNL, Alan. Brett Psych Give it up For Ivan Vargas There he is. <laughs> oh, that had me in tears. What's up? What's up? Oh, there it is. It's official, ladies and gentlemen. I was looking at Alan's face down in the, down in the, <laughs> the entire time. Oh, priceless. Priceless. Uh, What's up? What's up, everybody? So you're this here. Awesome. You're finally official. Let's go. If you you don't know Ivan, I don't think you've, you've been paying attention. Uh, I've had the pleasure 
of meeting Ivan uh, personally. And yeah, he's got his porn stash on and he's ready to rock and roll tonight. But just a, a truly great individual, Ron G. Uh, I was talking to Ron G, one of our producers. He's like, oh, my God, if if Ivan's a part of wants to be a part of this, then absolutely. Claudio, the same thing. Chris Jackal, the same thing. We've all met you and the tailgate. We just had a blast. You obviously are in the infamous clip of Phil. This is your dad, <laughs> you know, and just the laughter and the brotherhood. You know, I've had, I've had a lot of interaction with you over the years, and I'm super excited about you coming over to the network and and taking on this this journey with us and you know tonight you've already produced something and i put him to the challenge i was like listen i've been waiting for years for keeping it 100 show and credits i just want everybody that does something for this network that so doesn't that cause jackal. right gotcha. fucking drama <laughs> to get their due and to have their moment on keeping it 100 because it is a place that everybody goes to and i have a i feel like you know i have a responsibility so adding you to the table i'll let you speak now i've spoken enough about you i'm excited man that that's you're a here. big honor ivan the fact that he will let you speak i don't I, like don't don't live that one down don't don't live it down bask in the glory of it right now. well, well i'm i'm just grateful. Um, you know, I was stepping away from it. I was thinking about stepping away from, you know, just podcasting and producing kind of all together. Um, had some family, family issues, uh, with my son, you know, leaving sports zone and such. It was, uh, it was, it was a tough decision. You know, I had a lot of thoughts. So there's a lot of things that weren't, weren't keeping me focused, you know, just things that I needed to go ahead and just get settled together. Obviously, you know, um, the truth is my son's going to need heart surgery. Yeah. So with me, like I just wanted to go ahead and just clear my, clear my head. And I think I did that. You know, I didn't want to. I didn't want to quit on a, a dream that, you know, I couldn't imagine being real, you know. So joining Phil and knowing Phil and knowing Shane and knowing Cars and Alan and Chris Jackal and Claudio and Cherie and knowing how much everybody is working towards that same goal. It was just no, no doubt why I should be here. It's just why I should no doubt why I should just say, Hey, you know, let me help you out. Let me help you build something that I believe in. And that's why I'm here. I first met you on bears hour live when, you know, after the, sh after every game we would, you gotta have hype, you know, you gotta have hype. Come on. And, you know, after we, you know, I rant and we break down the game, we always bring on one fan or two fans and people get chickened out. And we would joke about some people that talk shit in the chat. I'm going to bring it. And they get on the air and it's a total different animal. It's a different beast, as Jackal would say, when the lights come on. And uh, it's true. And you came on once. And that's how the relationship between me and you, Bill, it was actually Alex Acevedo bridging that guy. Hey, this guy actually does shows and he produces and he's over here. And that brought me to my friendship with Sean and everybody over at, at Sports Zone. And yeah, and everybody at Sport like Sports yeah. Zone was the best. Like I, I love everybody there. Yeah, I just think like. With everything that was going on with me, it was just the right time, you know. Like I, I didn't have a right focus, 
they were doing, you know, they were trying, they're trying to do some, they're building still. I didn't have the, the, the correct focus. They have, you know, they're, they're going to be great still. They have, mm-hmm. you know, new, new producers, fresh producers. I think I believe in them. I help, you know, a few of them get, you know, settled. So I, there, it was, it was just something I needed to do. And it's like the past couple months, just sitting there and not doing anything, my, Mike's been on the ground, nothing, no cameras on, no nothing, no, not talking anything. Just kind of, it wasn't what I needed to do, you know, but being stagnant, you know, uh, an idle mind is the devil's playground. I just, that wasn't where I needed to be. And then, you know, obviously me and Phil are close. So talking with you and, and knowing your situation and, and, you know, all the patrons found out about, you know, some of, what the truth was about Phil's situation and, and, and the past and, and some of what is the present, but it's still the past, I guess. But, you know, knowing that it, I was, it, it just started to make sense. It started to make sense for me. It started to make sense for my family, my wife, you know, she, like I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for her. Like this is, to me, this is, is it doesn't seem like it's a, a for real thing, but like it it truly is like, you know, to, to her, she sees how much I care about producing, care about building, especially especially with guys like Phil, like Shane, like Carl, like everybody here on the on the network just wants to build something great. And that's that's just where I want to be is is with like minded people trying to build something great. Not that you know, where I came from was, was, was anything different. It's just at this time, you know, from not doing anything for a few months, I can't allow myself to just quit on this dream. You know, it, it's, it's something that I, I, I truly believe in just like Phil and Shane call everybody here on the network. So like, it, it's just something that I, like, I, I couldn't be happier. Like right now I couldn't be happier. I'm like, I, I was telling my wife, you know, I'm, motivated again you know mm-hmm. these past couple months haven't been really great you know but it's i'm 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 motivated again i'm happy mm-hmm. like not 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 that i wasn't happy but like i'm just I, i'm i'm eager to do something different do something new and yeah i just uh, i'm glad to well, be a part of it i wanted you to talk about what you said to me you reached out to me and were like I want to be a part of this and this is why. Right. And BHL is where everybody goes. And then, and then you went on from there and that was like, you could see the emotion, just like you shared tonight, the authenticity of your emotion and wanting to be a part of this and also wanting to help build what we've built. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I just looking at what you guys have done, you know, like just that's that that show, you know, that patron show, the all access show with with the, the tell all. Yeah. You know, town hall. no. Yeah. The town hall. Just knowing where you guys came from and such and, and just watching and seeing like, you know, even what I was helping build, what I've tried to do, just watching everybody else, seeing how everybody else was like, there's just. There's no doubt at the authenticity of the tape never lies, right? They're just it's just real, raw, truthful. I don't believe, you know, despite what's been going on recently, I don't believe that, you know, Phil and Shane are are some type of, you know, villains, you know what I mean? Some type of bullies or anything like that. I don't I just it getting to know them getting you know meeting phil getting to know phil personally as a friend you know i just i told you know both him and shane so it's like when you when you look at the tape never lies compared to other you know entities other podcasts whoever it's the realest one it's the most original it's the most true it's the most authentic one it's just it's to me it's undeniable like when i go ahead and i'm thinking chicago bears post game or I need I need my Bears fix. I, I might be thinking, you know, like I might be thinking the the football after show. You know, you have Cap, obviously Olin, 
And mm-hmm. then you have Alex Brown and Lance Britt. Like, I, that's that's one I'd go to. But honestly, the first one I'm thinking of is Bears Hour Live. You know what I mean? And then I'm thinking, all right, you know, if I, I – it's, it's just undeniable – how you know awesome you guys you know how awesome of a show how awesome of a of a brand you guys have built and i'm just happy to be a part of it like just the little bit that i have been a part now i'm just i'm glad to be a part all i want to do is help build this because you know even with the patrons and i'm just you know blessed to see so much love it's like yeah, like you know, I, I I can't wait to help build not only for this, but for them. Like they come here every time. Every time I, I'm in the chat, every time I'm watching you guys, these guys go all out all the time. And you know, it's 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 amazing to be a part of something like that where everybody takes a part. Like not not only the people that are behind it, but the fans as well, and how much love that they give is is, is just amazing. Your passion, your purpose was indicated to me over the phone and your talent for me is undeniable and i want to surround myself a with good people and talented people and if your goal was to do more like bhl and keeping it 100 i want to make good shows and great graphics and help better it that I've always had dreams, just like tonight. At the end of the show, Ivan produced the show Ender tonight, which is going to be our Ender for the next whatever amount of years, unless we fire Jackal, and then we'll have to re-edit it or whatever. Uh, But in true form, you know, you take a lot. You're going to take a lot of shots here, but you know the game and you know the stuff. But when you talk about your son Bo. Mm. to me over the phone and Shane and just knowing that you want to get to not let go of your last swing at the bat. I'm going to give you that opportunity. I know people are going to paint Phil and Shane. Uh, we picked up Bratcher. Oh, look at them now. They're pick- I, we knew that some people are going to say, it, and that isn't the case. I'm telling you that right now from my heart. It's like, I'm looking out for a guy that reached out to me and wants to do something big. I'm going to give him that shot. I'm going to give Alan Bratcher that shot. I'm going to give anybody. I I just talked to a guy that lost his job as a welder, Nick. Hopefully he's in the chat. He wants to do t-shirt graphics. He's been working his fucking vacation on making a TTNL established t-shirt for the whole vacation sending me screen i'm helping nick i'm gonna help everybody that i possibly can i told my wife i get so fired up with people manipulating a fucking story i can't help myself i gotta fight i gotta get back and then public perception how is everybody gonna handle phil yelling at somebody or telling the truth You want to know the truth? Go sign up for Patreon and watch the town hall. I'll leave. I'll drop the mic there. Then that's the truth. I have nothing to hide. Never lie. I never will. I fucked up about Twitter burner accounts. I've faced this a hundred times. That's the only thing anyone has ever had to hold against the character that I have. There's nothing to be held against Shane Marsaw. As the most loyal, compassionate, funny prick. I'll tell you this: all you guys have you ever like, seen. All, all <laughs> Phil, all Phil and Shane have done. If you you know cars, you know cars, like meaning cars. All they've done is really help me, just kind of guide me. It, you know, there he is. It's it's just been it's been just a pleasure knowing them, knowing you guys, knowing just getting to meet. Everybody, you know, not only in the chat, but you know, getting to meet some of the patrons when we yeah. did the, you know, the the tailgate show, stuff like that. That was just like that's when I I I just had it. Like, man, this is just something amazing. Like, just knowing that you guys are building there, like, just what we're building here, you know, it, 
to me, the sky's the limit. So that's why it's just. And I'm just going to perfect. Just, it was a perfect landing spot for me. You have a lot of ideas. I have a lot of ideas. Shane has a lot of ideas. We have some guys that want to do things like Bratcher. I know we poked fun of Alan in the freaking thing, but Alan, you know, you get that we joke around here. Ivan's going to have to take some shots. Jackal's taking many a shots. Claudio, all of us take shots. Well, Alan Bratcher has stepped up too and is doing a lot of things. But I'm just for clarity, I want people to know I meet someone, I have a special bond. I just know the character and the integrity that my wife carries herself with. When, when my wife gets on the plane and says, out of all the people, I've really, really, really liked Ivan Vargas. Like that, I won't forget. Like she was talking about everybody, how much she liked everyone. Like you were one of, you were like the underrated blazing game for Herb, you know, for my wife. And that, to add that to, I, I've already seen how you work. Hey, can you make an ender? This is what I'm thinking. Because I'm always, and cars, I'm more so Shane will know. I'm a, I'm doing a jackal knows. I'm editing on my phone. I'm thinking of crazy ideas. I'm doing things to make TTNL the best and most original. So I do take a lot of pride in that. So who I surround myself with, yeah, I get emotion. Yeah, I get fired up. But at the end of the day, I'm proud of everybody that's doing something from Ron G's graphics right here. What he does to Caden Whitlow's open. Those guys deserve all this credit. And, and that's why I was really happy to add you and, and give you that title. You'd be my right hand man, the lead dog, the lead producer, because Alan, Jackal, Cherie, all of these people have great ideas. I can't be on top of everybody all the time. And I think you're the great, perfect job. So I think TTNL fans, if you don't know Ivan, got to get to know him. And we have a lot of creative ideas from fantasy football to pregame shows and stuff that Ivan could take off my plate and handle and a lot of more interesting stuff maybe jack will have his own fucking show i won't have to listen to it ivan will have quit to jacking it. off <laughs> quit jacking off that's the, the cob quickie show with jackal but anyway so excited to announce tonight you know we didn't even get to watch the interviews i thought Herb I was trying not Howard. to get. I was, I was trying to tell myself not to get emotional, but that just yeah, you just hey, you know you can't. Welcome you can't to deny the real. You know man. you can't deny the real. You can't deny the real. And I was trying to go back, and I have Caden Whitlow producing a BHL because BHL is going to be back. That's where I first met Ivan. Here's a little taste. Waiting for it. Yeah. Bill. He's overwhelmed. Give me some fucking names. Every, every week we can understand the fucking why. Fucking name. Bears Hour Live. Ten seconds. That gives you like a whole. It does give you a, in ten seconds. Maybe they're right about these long intros, cars. Ten seconds. BHL, just a, like an appetizer. That'll be back. That's where we met Ivan. That's why I bring everybody in here. Christopher <laughs> Jackal. <laughs> you know what the best part about comedy is, Phil? Timing. And you okay, just man. nailed that one. Okay, I didn't even know. What are you talking even about? paying attention. Nothing. I have no Nothing. idea. It was a pen, guys. Just a yeah. elbow ligrapho. <laughs> you were writing so many notes, the pencil that's, just started on I fire. I mean, what I do. Crazy. I wish I had a fucking pen so I could hold that up instead. Like, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. I was not paying attention to anybody. I was just trying to get. We know, Phil. We know. We yeah, know. I was trying to get to this uh, next prospect in the show before we wrap up tonight because we didn't even get to the uh, 
the pressers or anything we oh. wanted to because Herb Howard was giving it amazing it all himself. So we didn't even need to watch as they berated Robert Quinn with uh, questions about being traded and what have you. But this. So do you think? Do you think he has to be traded, Phil? I don't think that part came across clear, and we should probably <laughs> spend the next forty-five minutes uh, discussing uh, whether or not that 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 happened. Right. We got to get after it again. Speaking of get after it again, someone could drop the Cherie drop. Who's got it? You guys do. I don't I'm... have it. <laughs> Nobody gave me I anything. Love all the... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, whoever. Welcome. I love all the... <laughs> Ivan's just getting used to all these drops. I think Ivan should have to do the read. That's what I said. Let's go make was... it up, Ivan. Your Where's... guy. Just make up the read? <laughs> <Yep>. No, I... <laughs> I will do the read tonight because I intended to send it to you guys, but we were in that interview and I. It was an amazing interview. Do you not want your push stop. to match with Ivan's seventies porn stash? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a boom man too. That's just made of pubic hair he glued to his face, you know, from manscaping. Manscaped. Oh, Don't forget the twenty percent off using the promo code Yoko. For TTNL heads, 100 crew, our friends at Manscaped, the global leaders in below the waist grooming, have spent two years, two years designing the most comfortable boxer briefs out there for for every man. Sleek, soft, and comfortable, and flexible. The brand new boxers 2.0 from Manscaped take the take the balls to heaven on earth manscaped have the lawnmower 4.0 for trimming so you can wear the boxers 2.0 for chilling they even trademarked the jewel pouch ivan so you know it's serious i think it's best in your your spouse's family jewels with this exclusive (laughs) offer get 20 percent off Free shipping by using the promo code YOKO, Y-O-K-O. And if you're a patron, you know why Shane chose that code, YOKO. Last, let's uh, say you're on a date, right? And you catch the manscaped waistband on that guy you're over there. Mm-hmm. Must mean they use the lawnmower 4.0. I didn't know this was a a woman's read so i'm changing the verbiage as <laughs> i go to the club, i'm actually <laughs> pretty proud of this <laughs> effort so no, you're doing you're doing pretty pretty well this is you're not bratchering this one yeah, at all yeah. no yeah. bratchering this the best electric trimmer for below the waist grooming their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof and it also has a 4000K LED spotlight. Clint Wilson, you might need to be precise in that shower. Don't worry, it's waterproof. And you got the light, turn out the lights, Cherie. It's balls of shaving. I love Man- balls. Of- Manscape is focused on ball comforting with the new Boxers 2.0. Boost your confidence everywhere you are, knowing he's you're wearing the oh. most absolute best pack for your sack. These boxers oh. are a game changer. The jewel pouch. Don't forget. Call to action. off plus free shipping with the code YOKO. That's manscaped.com. Manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code YOKO at manscaped.com. Once the Boxers 2.0 touch your sack, you're never going back. There you go. Manscaped, (laughs) the sponsor here on the network. Call Bud Light. Just making Listen. my beer pyramid over here. <laughs> what? <laughs> beer pyramid. I don't know what that is. Get in somebody's ass today. I agree. Because no, you're not a drinker. 
she agrees <clears throat> with the decisions with, that we've made. She's pissed off. Fuck out of here, Ted. <laughs> 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 From the fans in the stands to the follows on the gram on the gram. Thanks for your support, showing love in the DM We stay Spencer strong, fight together till the end Now it's time to shout out worldwide friends and fam life. The network that keeps it real, 100 crew So many in the world that I gotta show love to But some this part, see the show is at its end But for me it's so important to thank the charter members and, and the fans Build the network, speak the truth to the tape Never run around the truth, no narratives we create Set them straight, no bubble screen on fourth and eight Call your chain, getting nervous, cause keeping them up too late That's it, no more to say to get the shot of vital But hurry up, cause the postman's getting homicidal Shout out, I know you hear me baby Shout out, I know you see me baby Shout out, we gotta holla at you Keep it 100 cool, gotta show love too Shout out I know you hear me, baby. Shout out. I know you see me, baby. Shout out. We gotta holla at you. Keep it 100 cool. Gotta show love to the network that keeps it real. Sense is strong. Yes, we are here. Shout outs, shout outs. You heard the truth from Ivan Vargas and Herb Howard tonight. Emotional truth, compassion. I'm just gonna say it while he's here. The true emotion of a father for his son is real. And just gonna reiterate, send that positive energy towards Ivan and his beautiful wife. Even though rumors are she might cheer for a certain team. There. Don't say it. <laughs> Don't fucking do it. <laughs> Don't ruin his day. Please. And his yeah, son, Bo. We're going to have to, exactly, right, Bo, Bo Strong. strong yes, as sir. he goes through. My daughter had open heart surgery when she was 11 weeks old. So I know. Uh, our guy, John Bradley, across the pond, his champion had surgery open eye. So, listen, all the energy, all the passion and compassion for your child and you, bro, and your family. Thank I you. never met your Thank wife, you. but we will. Yeah, she's coming. She wanted a, well, I, you haven't announced. She will not Have we wear. Have you announced the, uh, no, 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 we haven't announced yeah. Okay, anything. yeah, well, well. Yeah, so yeah, we, we had to change course games. five yeah. times now. Okay, all right, all right. we're gonna end up. I think we've locked it in. Yeah. We well, then I'll just, I'll just. I'll just. She said she may or may not be there. I'll just oh, leave it at that. A, we we just decided to go to a Lions game since those tickets are cheaper and easier to procure. Yeah. So we we're gonna go together. warmer yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just gonna go hang out there instead. So. <clears throat> you never know. You might be on to something there. Um, tonight, if you're just tuning in, I want to uh, lead this off. If you're just tuning in, Shane and Cherie, uh, both sick. Cherie has COVID. She got the Rona like I did. Let me tell you, it's not easy. And uh, Shane is under the weather. He has tested negative twice for it. But my wife is like, he's got it. It's just Stop hasn't tested. But he apparently thinks he has the 24-hour bug. I told him, just stay on pup. 
Stay on pop. He's got a runny nose. Oh, so he's renegotiating his contract, is what you're saying. Gotcha. Okay. I got you. That was the runny nose. That was very well played. Is he going to get traded? (laughs) Is he going to get traded? I'm here. No, I'm here. That's got to be a drop. I'm here. That's all that matters. That is. They're always looking for a conspiracy. We talked a lot tonight with Herb Howard, and we also announced the latest addition, uh, Ivan Vargas, our lead producer on the network here, full of producers. So you got some splaining to do, Ivan, to these peeps. Let me know who's not stepping up. I had ass COVID. Cars, would you like to comment on that? <laughs> you got it from the minivan. He might have tricked me into that drop. Fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I just recognized that was me reading. Oh, what am I doing here? I got to take that up in here. All right. See, <laughs> Breezy. Thanks for the See reminder. You. All right. Bro. Let's give uh, our guest that was a former guest, but now is a producer, Ivan. Do you have anybody to shout out? Uh, Well, I mean, other than you guys, uh, honestly, my wife, you know, she wouldn't be doing this, banging on my drum, trying to build something, you know, build something great without her. Uh, Like I said, it it was kind of her nudging me to do this to get to this point so you know yeah i'll shout her out definitely perfect his first shout out was short and sweet just like cars likes them (laughs) cars you have anyone to shout out uh yeah so i'll just shout out my kids so they've uh we're getting close and and aubrey is finding confidence which you know, for me who doesn't lack confidence, uh, it's very difficult to have a child that does, uh, but she's hit her own. So we've had a big week with her really pushing herself. And so uh, always proud dad, but sometimes, you know, they go a little bit extra and, and I become extra. So that's my shout out for that. Nice, nice. Alan, A.B. Bratcher. Oh. Got any uh, shout outs? Yeah, for me. First, guys, I've got to tell you, if you missed Saturday's show, you missed a great show. I went back, I watched it when I was a little drunk as hell when I watched it the first time. I'm not going to lie. I went back and watched it again, and it was worth <laughs> You don't want me to give you some dap? All right, fine. No, no. You know that was Jackal? <laughs> Dude, I fucking <laughs> it's Ivan initiated. Definitely it was Jackal. Out. Dude, it's no, not seriously, me. Though. No, seriously, though, what I'm Unless saying is, guys, Ivan was, uh... you've got to go watch that patron show, The Roundtable. I'm telling you, Phil and Shane killed it on that show. It I It is worth it, the watch. I'm telling you, great show. And secondly for me, I think we had about, I want to say about 483 total fans tonight in this chat. My God, I couldn't keep up with you guys tonight. You guys were killing it. Amazing job to you fans. You asked great question. Oh, that's the juice, baby. Yo, I feel the juice in my mouth. Yo, the juice in your ass like Florida orange, baby. Yo, pulp free. <laughs> Hell no. Yes, killed it. And last but not least, my brother Ivan here, man. I'm happy to have you, bro. I've I, I've been hoping for this for a long time for you, man. You deserve it. You're a great producer. You know what you're doing, man. Happy to have you on this team, and we know that Thank we're you. going up from here, brother. I know it. That's it. Well said, man. I appreciate Cheers. your kind words, man. And in all honesty, we give you a lot of shit. But as Shane has said many a time, and sometimes we have to point it out because people maybe never were in a locker room or never were around. And in this world, there's so many PC things that you can't say and this, that, and the other. And, and for you guys the most don't part, know what goes on when we're behind the scenes with this guy. I'm telling you, these guys are genuine. And, you know, yeah, they give me shit. It's fun, though, for me, and, but I know who they are as people. And I'm telling you, you couldn't have a better group of guys here. I'm telling you, MVP group's coming. Well, I appreciate that. Again, that 
patron show was a tough one. I, I wish Cars was there. That was the only thing I wish yeah. we could have had. In all honesty, that's keeping it a hundred because I think he would have added some perspective as well. Because I just think the truth shall sh set you free. And uh, I got to shout out Bullets real quick before yeah. Jackal because Bullets sent me a quote from my uncle. And this is so surreal to me. A man can make mistakes, but he isn't a failure until he starts blaming someone else. That's Sam Ortigliano. That needs to be printed up on my wall. Great one. Because I, I know everybody at this table and all of the people I've partnered with at this network has made a mistake. And I know they've not blamed anybody else but themselves. And that's why we're here. And thank you, Bullets, for sending that to me tonight. Uh, it means a lot because it is an amazing quote. And it's truth. It's one of those life lessons. I've been lucky. I am lucky sometimes to have such a great dad and great family, you know. And sometimes I get down and depressed just like anybody else. I've been through a lot. And the patron show will will let you know what I'm talking about. But the reality is, you guys, Wednesday nights, these fans, as Alan's saying, 487, watching Herb and all of us talking. You guys, come here. I'm never going to let you down. Never going to let you down. And I appreciate that. So anyway, no, Jack. I got one more thing. Hold no, on. Roger. One Roger. second. One second. Hold on, guys. So Ron Rizzle asked about the background music. Our boy, Mr. Cool Kennedy, oh, he filled it. He sent me over 30 tracks of music that he produced himself, guys. Everything we're going to try to play on here from now on is all Cool Kennedy, guys. So give it up for our boy, Cool Kennedy. Cool One of the exclusive. another great yeah. producer on this network. And remember how uh, Bill Walsh had such a great coaching tree? That's what I feel. And it's okay. If Again. you guys grow and people start poaching you to big jobs, nope. that's the goal here. I just I just know I want to surround myself with people that are great people. Speaking of great people, Jackal, you have some shout outs? Short and sweet. Ivan, I fucking love it, man. Great addition. I, I second your statement and sentiment, AB. You know, it's not that we're going up from here, but it's just we are going. We're continuing the trend and moving that needle of where it's been going steadily. And I think you're just going to help solidify that, man. So I'm looking forward to working with you. Um, but more importantly, I just want to shout everybody out here in the, in the chat. It was a great night. A lot of positivity here. Everybody kind of just it bears keeping it a hundred and herb howard fucking over two almost two and a half hours of just exclusive Come on. realism man it was amazing it was fucking sick and i loved every minute of it and i cannot wait football is finally here day one's in the books we actually have meaningful football like real reps and fucking pads are going on and shit it's fucking great and we will be fucking bringing it all to you and more importantly shane hope you feel better get well soon sheree do your thing and uh because we need you on that ad read for more importantly five five of us sitting up here listening to phil talk about shaving his nuts man uh, you know i don't know how much more i could have took it but hey, here we are called the pass over, to you, over to you phil but lastly give me some fucking somebody name. You haven't you know you're thinking oh about let him have his drop say hello. man go ahead and say it again say it again, say it again. no you dropped no i was just saying hey like we like i always say you're thinking about somebody shoot him a text give him a call um, let them know you're thinking about them. And, uh, you know, and uh, actually, lastly, you know, both strong. You know, Ivan, I appreciate you sharing that. And I'll be sending my family sends nothing but love to uh, the Varguses. And uh, just keep it real, man. And Thank Ivan's you. coming to on Saturday. He's actually coming yeah, to I'll be there. with us now. And yes. I just got a message from our buddy Herb Howard said that he can't wait to see us there. He's going to be there looking for us, guys. That's dope. There you go. You guys will be there. Just a tremendous night. I want to thank all of you guys for taking the time out, helping out the production. I know I can be a hard ass and I don't mince words at all. So sometimes the way a text is read, but I think some people start to get to know that I just want the show 
and the fans to have a, an escape. And if you don't want to be on the show or you have uh, an agenda, I don't want that. I just want the best for the show and the people that have put a lot of time and effort into it. And to come onto the show and spend your night here on Wednesday night with us is amazing. Uh, you guys were awesome tonight. I'm super excited to share Ivan's production here. Um, I've had the pleasure of seeing it. I know this uh, real quick, real back, quick. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Hold um, on. I was going to put up the breaking news for you, but okay. Is this a fugitive? Jack Baller. Underground <laughs> tunnel, dude. What the fuck? Jack you Baller. Were, you weren't here for the I just read, popped man. Up Holy cow. What's going on, guys? Oh, Jack Baller. Shit from the Philippines. Oh, okay. Can't we believe it. The Philippines. Nice to meet you, finally. We have breaking news. Jack yes, Baller's right. here. <laughs> well, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, I'm in the Philippines, and I wouldn't be here without TTNL. I mean, it really, that's why I wanted to come on. I know Shane's not here, um, but I wouldn't be here without TTNL Network. And uh, and I got to give a shout out to Logan, of course, because I wouldn't be here without him as well. So I just wanted to thank you, uh, Phil. This is, you know, I changed my life about a, a year ago. I was on the show about a year ago, and uh, I just decided to uh, kind of make myself uncomfortable, and this was part of it. I got on the show, and I was really uncomfortable. I got out of my comfort zone, and I just tried to like live life with and try to get as much experience and try new things as I can. And uh, I'm out here in the Philippines. I'm unemployed, and I'm working on a podcast, and... Uh, not a podcast, but a YouTube channel, and I'm just going for it, and uh, I'm trying everything, and and uh, I don't know, you probably don't know this, but I lost about a hundred pounds. So when I, when I first, yeah, I was been worried that uh, maybe you there, were Jack trying Baller. the Filipino. It took me a couple of years. It took a lot me of a people couple that years. are loving you and, in this chat uh, right now, bud. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it took me a couple of years to do it, but I did it with intermittent fasting, and I was Look overweight. I was depressed. Um, I was just kind of going through life with like just going through the motions. I was like, you know, I was an alcoholic, so I just virtually changed my whole life, and it really started with TTNL. Um, wow! wow. And I just I, I can't wow. tell you how much this means. Uh, this network means to me. I mean, it pretty much saved my life. This network did. I mean, it really did. I'm going to just throw that out there. Um, wow. And and thank you, Logan. And thank you, Shane. Cars, Bratcher, and Ivan, and Jackal. Um, Who fuck yourself. To... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jack. <laughs> and welcome to the show, Ivan. And free. That was... And free. I know that was Phil. <laughs> That was definitely and Cherie, me. Yeah, and thank you, Phil. I've met so many people on the show. And last year I went to four Bears games. A lot of yep. them had to do with uh, I won the raffle uh, to be on the show. And then I won the, the contest to go to the Bears game and see uh, Robert Quinn break the record. I saw Tom Brady break the record last year. Uh, so so every ever since I've been on TTNL, my life has changed in a positive way. And that's what my channel's about. It's not like, oh, come see, I'm doing all these cool things in this beautiful place. It's really like how how to get out of your comfort zone and how to like try new things and, and just go for it and believe in yourself. Um, well, I And that's what it's about. I, pre yes! I appreciate you coming on, jumping here at the shout outs giving a big shout out to TTNL. I don't know if being uh, unemployed, losing weight <laughs> and <laughs> almost homeless. It looks like you're in a shack or something there. Jack will no, be in a tunnel. You did Logan dig that for you? <laughs> no, it's <laughs> No, I'm at a, I'm actually at a, a really nice hostel. Oh, okay. It's, okay. So I'm on right. I'm traveling. I'm what are you rarely doing? I didn't want to miss Send you down a road of unemployment and everything like that. I don't want that. So no, what's the YouTube, I mean, I have, about, what's the YouTube channel about? Uh, what's well, the name of the YouTube channel? Start it off. It's called, just go to uh, YouTube and just type in Jack Baller. That's and, it. Uh, 
Peach. I'll pop up. Doing whatever, yeah. whatever happens. Giving you a shameless well, yeah, I'm, plug. I'm actually showing, yeah, it's kind of like a travel blog with, okay. you know, I'm going to different hostels and I'm reviewing them. And I'm doing different, I've, I've learned to surf here. Nice. I uh, did yoga here. I'm going to start jujitsu in like a week or two. Aren't you doing like drunk um, yoga or something? Like, like, like beer that? yoga? Aren't you, you doing know, beer I yoga? Beer yoga. Yeah. yeah okay. I got, yeah, I did that. I did. Well, don't um, be an alcoholic. I did stand up paddle boarding. No, no. So, so there there's a is. lot of things. Jack like Baller. Did. Jack Baller. Yeah, buddy. Give it a, Thank you, Ivan. Give it a look. Give it a follow. Some great Thank content out there, man. Some of his videos yeah. are breath. Some of his videos are breathtaking. There you go. I mean, you got to look. You got to look at Jack. But thank you, know. you. thank you. Well, we wanted so, to bring you on in the shout outs, give you your opportunity before we wrap up here. Truly I appreciate, appreciate your kind words. I will call you Jack. I know you by another name, but you kind <laughs> of metamorphosized yourself. I did into Jack so, Baller, yeah. and listen. When I think about what I've quoted my uncle, you know, you know look at this. Uh, the voice right there of TTNL is Lawrence. reading my mind. Everybody goes through struggles. And I'm trying, Cars is trying, and, and I think everybody that really taps into the kind of uh, IV that TTNL extends every Wednesday night, you kind of understand that this is more than just bears talk. It's family, it's life, it's emotion and passion. But the heartbeat obviously is the Chicago Bears for better or for worse. And I'm glad this network has helped you out. And I'm glad you came on the show tonight at the end. And what an amazing show with Herb Howard. We're adding Ivan Vargas, Bo Strong. You know, prayers up for him and Ivan and his family. Obviously, you'll be seeing a lot of Ivan and what he does here. Uh, follow Jack Baller and Thank you. let him know uh, what he's doing. And, and lastly, I just want to wrap up the show with my shout out. Hey, Phil. Uh, yes. Can I just interject real quick? Oh, if if it's okay. No, last it, cars thought I was on a flow to no, leave. No, cars. I apologize. <laughs> I know you want to go to bed, but uh, dude, I, I go ahead. I, go my ahead. son had his last uh, flag football game tonight, and that oh, okay. little fucker scored three touchdowns. And nice. I just want to give him a little shout out. So, Conrad, way to go! And I just want to play it for him tomorrow so he can feel good about it. So, okay. sorry. It was, there you go. That was worse. Shameless plug for my son. That was worse. That was worse. The right cars. Family. I you it, Listen, I got a lot of people to thank, but I'm going to shorten it up because <laughs> great, of time. Great, uh, first and foremost, like I said, all of you guys, all of the TTNL producers, Ron G, Caden Whitlow, Cherie, obviously thinking of my boy Shane. Hopefully you enjoyed the show as much as I did being a part of it. Uh, Rich Ludwig. Lud Ludwikowski Ludwikowski <laughs> has donated some training camp tickets to TTNL. I've given them out to Ivan. I've given them to Ron G. Cool Kennedy. And I'm waiting to hear back from Caden Whitlow. If Caden can't go, I'm going to be giving it out to one of our patrons because Rich has been so. Um, generous here so it'll be next friday training camp august 5th we're gonna uh, be there that day too kaden whitlow i know you and alex acevedo will be there and if kaden can't go no pressure on him everyone's like fuck kaden hopefully <laughs> <laughs> one of you patrons sign up become a patron the tape never lies.com um last shout out uh, actually, a couple more. Um, Nick, the new graphics guy's working hard. I know he lost his job. But again, just like Josh E. Talking about this network and what it means to him. Uh, glad to have him aboard. Kevin Winston. Um, my guy. Oh, God. Where are you? So many people. Gareth Tanswell. I just want to thank you for your kind words and what you and Tom Boson, what that 
patron show that Bratcher's talking about meant to them. I thank you for the long but completely amazing words. I want to thank Bullets again for his kindness and thoughtfulness. It, it's unbelievable that someone thinks like that. So I have to say on that, my last shout out goes to my wife. Uh, tomorrow will be 11 years, Mary. Our anniversary tomorrow, the most supportive, compassionate, best friend, mother. And I saw somebody in the chat like, TTNL should do the wives show. And I think you're hundred percent right. Yeah. yeah, because the wives have been so supportive. Sometimes you're four, three, four hours. We're three hours tonight talking bears, talking life, having a lot of fun. But my wife and I, I never thought I was gonna get married again, honestly, until I met, you know, she's such a beautiful person physically, but even more beautiful inside. So I'm excited about my life. And tonight I was putting together this chair that she got me before the show. So nice I'm not chair. sitting in this. I used to have a lazy boy chair. Lumbar. And looks smaller mm-hmm. than anything that I am, even smaller than I am. And then I got a thousand. I'll show you. See all these gray foam you love those things you got a lot of work to do those are going (laughs) up on the ceiling (laughs) there's white ones and gray ones but anyway we're getting the studio but to have a a wife supportive of this show and realizes the importance it plays in cam cam's life hl priest and cool kennedy and thunder girl everybody I, i so many of you in the chat the positives so far outweigh the negatives that being said my last shout out goes to ivan vargas i'm so happy that you shared your true feelings with me that day about what your talent means to you that was the impetus of me saying and shane saying can never let turn our cheek on this guy so it all about second chances it's so fitting that jack baller comes on and talks about his second chance because tonight we have a bunch of second chances. hopefully tevin jenkins wakes up with his second chance because we need him to but we are going to cover it like nobody else does we don't flip flop in fact we call each other out whether it be bears hour live one more time yeah. 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 Well, give me some fucking name. every you week we're gonna understand the fucking why whether that or whether keeping it a hundred or x's with the o's and all of the other shows that we are going to have. Chris Zorich is so fired up. He wanted to come on the show tonight to talk Bears. I said, you got to wait, big fella. Next week, we got Dion Miller. Wednesday night, keeping it 100. We'll be live for a little while. I'll be in Rhode Island with my dad. I'm going up to visit him. And our guys will be live on Patreon, breaking down camp with us on Saturday. So... I'm looking forward to Ivan Acevedo and Bratcher live from camp. It's going to be a lot of fun. That being said, for my guy, Cars, thank you so much, Cars, for everything you do. Chris Jackal, not only is he great on the airwaves and funny, and he talks shit behind your back, (laughs) he is very talented (laughs) in regards to carpentry and skilled <laughs> craftsman this guy is i'm just Can letting say, you know never mind, I'm fake looks say, that that too. <laughs> i'm really not really sure books. what's going on right now for jack uh, baller in the philippines <laughs> he's in a fucking right he's in a real, real quick, real quick. i got a real quick for you I got, uh, yes real quick change real quick everything you started to cars. change when i did this I need him on more often, so it's not just me. <laughs> Shit. Well, yeah, I use him anytime. Bye, cars. Real quick. So, uh, <laughs> I'd already mentioned, 
you know, be uncomfortable. And that's what I was doing. But this is a real simple, <laughs> just try to make today better than yesterday. It's really easy. Today's better than yesterday already. And so I'm going to try to make tomorrow better than today. It's really easy if you stack days in a row. Things started to change when I, I started to do that. So just be God conscious of that. Bless you, bro. Well said, Jack. Uh, hopefully we see you soon. How long are you staying on the island? Oh, the island I'm on now? Leaving? I don't know. I don't, When's your visa? No, I'm not coming home. I'm not, not coming home. Don't ever give it up. It's, don't give it up. I renew it every two months. So it's, okay. it's, I'm here. I'm here, baby. All right. I may come well, back for uh, TTNL. That's the right. only thing that will get me back. TTNL greet. Once we put that date, Jack Baller's coming back. When's that date? Maybe, maybe. maybe. Look at that pink skin in the parking lot, Jack. I promise you, next Wednesday night, Thank we God. announce the date. That's going to be it. Next Wednesday night, the date will Bye. be announced for Alan Bratcher, AB, the producer, and our guy, our new producer here, Ivan Vargas. This is it. Boo Man this is Ivan's like, production Ron here, capturing all of the personalities that you guys know and love on TTNL. Pay attention. Take the banner down, if you will, and then I'll start the show. Then I'll start the ending, and then we'll end it. And then take the beat off. Could someone do that? Yep, got it. Get down to I the beat. It. Get down to the beat. Hold get on. down. Get down. Get down tonight. To <laughs> We're good. Okay, here we go. Oh, Ivan stop. Vargas. End credits. Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man. Keeping it 100. Keeping it 100. I know we need to run the ball more. I'm not an idiot. I can only imagine the nose coming in that thing. Keeping it 100. Then let me do what I have to do. Open competition. Keeping it 100. The smartest man. My Chicago Bears select Justin Fields. I know we need to run the ball more. I'm not an idiot. Let's throw curls, curls, curls. Keeping it 100. Keeping it 100. Open competition. Keeping it 100. The smartest man. My give me a tackle or give me that. Quarterback, Ohio State. I think he can get up and go faster than a guy like David Montgomery. No. The draft tackle. No. No. I'm a boomer. I'm a boomer. I'm a boomer. I know we need to run the ball more. The number one beer show on the planet. Get in somebody's ass today. Did you dance Because it's going to show right up in that film, boy. Faith never lies. Prediction? Yes, prediction. Pain. I love all that.